I think it should be going live now. Yep. It says it's, it's live. streaming. It's live. Not quite yet. Okay, it's live. What? Greetings, listening audience. Good greetings, everybody that's here. Okay. Greetings to everybody in the Zoom. I'm Baba Singor Baye, first Assistant President General of UNIA ACLRC 2020, and I'm going to do libation and our opening ritual. Uh, and then we're going to pass it on to President General Akili Nkrumah, and we're going to get started. We had, we had for a very, very powerful uh, history, her story, our story, uh, sharing for a great, great warrior brother, Marcus Garvey. Junior. So without any further ado, brothers and sisters, stay with me. I'm going to take us through libation. We want to call on the Most High God always first to have his or her drink. And we want to call on the Right Excellent Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, First Ashe. President General of the UNIA. We want to call on Amy Jux Garvey to have her drink. And certainly, and certainly we want to also call on Amy Ashwood to have her drink. And we want to call on our good brother, whose birthday happens to be today, Dr. Tony Martin to have his drink. We wanna call on the Honorable Charles L. James, President General. We wanna call on the Honorable Thomas W. Harvey. We wanna call on Honorable Reginald Maddox. We wanna call on William Sherrill. We wanna call on Stewart to have his drink. We wanna call on Honorable Redmond Battle. We wanna call on Estelle James. We wanna call Farouk Muhammad to have his drink. We wanna call Gene Slappy. We wanna call Mae Ferguson. We wanna call Alma Golden. We wanna call Marcus Garvey Jr. We wanna call Kamala Robinson. We wanna call Sadie Madison. We wanna call Ruth Smith. We wanna call Henrietta Vinton Davis. We wanna call Lady Demina. We wanna call Jackson Bay. We wanna call Haseem Nkrumah. We wanna call Nyata Ture. And there's so many others we could call on, brothers and sisters. We're just giving you an example of some of the great Garveyites who've gone before us, whose shoulders we stand on, and our ancestors. So without any further ado, I say to all of those that we did not call, please come and help us as well and have your drink. And without any further ado, I say Ashe. 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 And so it is our ancestors who, what we live and work for, are with us as always, even when we don't call them. Because many of them are angry, I'm sure, because a lot of the things they lived and died for are not completed. So without any further ado, we go into the ritual of RC 2020 UNIA government just to open. So anyway, Without any further ado, we want to recite the preamble, which is very important, brothers and sisters. The Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive, and expansive society, and is founded by persons desired to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro African peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to do all in their power to conserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood and sisterhood of man and woman and the fatherhood and motherhood of the most high God as well. The motto of the organization, the government, is one God, one aim and one destiny. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppresses the weak, confusion and discontent will ever mark the path of man and woman. But with love, faith, and charity towards all, the ring of peace and plenty will be hurled into the world, and the generations of men and women shall be called blessed. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One aim. One, aim. one, aim. one, aim. one destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Commit. Ethiopia, Ethiopia shall soon, soon stretch forth her hands, hands to God. Except the Lord builds build the house. house. Their labor they, is, is but the laws that, that build it. Except the Lord the keep the city, the, the watchmen wake, wake up but in, in vain. vain. Now, brothers and sisters, I pledge to the flag. I commit my body, mind, and, and spirit, spirit to the protection to the and defense and security, security of the red, red black, black, and green. green. I dedicate my life, life to the redemption, redemption of Mother, of Mother Africa, Africa 
and to the liberation, the liberation of her of scattered, scattered black, black children. children. I accept Except for myself, myself and, my and my descendants the teachings of universal African nationalism and promise that our children will be instilled with the purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people in order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail until all black people are free and united through one God, one God, one name, and one destiny. One death. And so it is. So it's my pleasure to introduce to those in the Zoom and those listening on the Facebook stream to our President General, who is a very committed, longtime soldier. Mm -hmm. You'll hear you'll hear from him as well as all of us. But guess what? The President General Honorable Akili Nkrumah is also moderating the program today. So without any further ado, Baba Akili. Abayagani, hotep to my family, hotep to those who are listening, those who are watching on Facebook Live. It is crucial that we take this moment at this time to bring memory and honor to Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr., the seventh president general. And it's so ironic that we pick today to honor him. And today is also the day of the birth of the Honorable Tony Martin, whom we will also bring to light as we do this program. Because you can't give tribute and ignore an ancestor's day. You also make sure that the ancestors are part. You're going to hear from members of the UNIA HCL who've had life experiences and work with uh, Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. You see, it's important that as tributes go, and there have been many tributes done on behalf of this, that it be a tribute that's done from the men and women that was a part of his governmental structure that was a part of his regime that worked with him. So without too much time for me in welcoming you to this event, I want to give praises and thanks to Senghor Baye, the first assistant president general, who was also the president general. You see, our legacy is written in our deeds and our work and our effort. And I was his first assistant president general. We did some mighty good work. And we get an opportunity to continue that good work going forward. He's long time committed, Garvey committed to the movement. And all of you who know him know this. So I'm not telling you anything new, but I will tell you his commitment continues and will continue throughout the next hundred years. Even though he might not claim a hundred years, I claim it for him. <laughs> That's right. As I claim it for <laughs> Sister Mary Bolton, who was Secretary General then and who is currently Secretary General now. Right. and who also worked with the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. So that I, without belaboring the welcome, I look forward to what transpires. I hope you can appreciate it, and I hope you recognize it as what it is. It's a tribute to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey that can only be done by mm -hmm. those of us who worked with him. Many can give tributes, but if you didn't work with the man in the UNIA, you're giving a tribute. We're giving you our life and a part of his life. We're going to touch his life today. So I want to first bring to the foray Sister Mary Bolton, Secretary General now. She was first Assistant Secretary General then to give you her perceptions of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. Mary Bolton. Yes, good evening everyone. It is a pleasure to be here to speak on behalf of the seventh President General, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. As the President General Brother Keeley just said, I was first Assistant President General at that time. In 1996, I was appointed first Assistant Secretary General of the UNIA ACL by the seventh President General, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. The funny thing about it was, he had asked me the night before at the banquet while we were dancing, are you ready to work? Of course, I said yes. But still, when the appointment came the day after his election, I was still shocked and surprised, but thrilled to be walking and working along the side of Sister Sadie Madison, who was appointed Secretary General. During Mr. Garvey's 
12 year tenure as president general, there was never a speaker in convention. We, no one complained either. No one complained. After all, he was the son of the founder, the Honorable Marcus Garvey himself. And as Mrs. Estelle James said on many occasions, his mother, Amy Jace Garvey, taught him well. Realizing that many protocols were not in place at that time, he began to focus on the Constitution. He also put the 20 point policy in place. During the convention of 1991 in Los Angeles, Brother St. Gore and Brother Jackson Bay had also worked on that 20 point policy. Mr. Garvey Jr. also gave us the Ankh as our symbol. During the 50th anniversary of the Organization of African Unity, the authors asked him, Mr. Garvey Jr., to write a chapter on the UNIA and ACL. This is when he penned the seven principles of Garveyism, perhaps his greatest contribution to the UNIA and ACL. Number one, African identity. Without African identity, you would not fight for Africa. Pride, number two. We needed to know our history so that we would be aware of it and also aware of our many accomplishments. Number three, self-reliance. Mr. Garvey Jr. knew that his father had emphasized self-reliance in all his programs. Number four, economic empowerment. Without our own economics, we would fail as a race. Number five, love for the motherland Africa. We needed to be uh, in love with Africa and things African. Number six, belief in a black God. If we worshiping, if we worship other people that look like someone else, then we would be a slave to that God. And number seven, science par excellence. Mr. Garvey Jr. knew as his father knew that without science and technology, we would always be dependent on another race for our survival. Having served Mr. Garvey Jr. for eight years as first assistant secretary general, I learned to appreciate his many, many qualities, such as his humor, his scholarship, his vision, and most of all, his love for his father and the work that he needed to continue. Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad, one God, one aim, one destiny. Sister Mary both the Secretary General, UNIACL, August 2004 until December 2019. Now I am Secretary General of UNIACL RC 2020 since January 17th, 2020. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I, I would like to share with the audience and those of you on this in the Zoom is that if it's going to be recorded in history, Mary Bolter is going to record it. Mm -hmm. And no matter if we get a film of this event or not, I assure <laughs> you there's going to be a document somewhere. That's right. That outlines this event. And I salute <laughs> you, Mary Bolter. Right. Truly, I've had the opportunity to work with Mary Bolter through a number of those years. And now I get to work with her as president <laughs> general. And I will say we may not have had an opportunity to dance on the floor, but I did get an opportunity to see the dance that your husband created. So yeah. that that's all well and good. And I want you to know that her tribute and her comments are not just to the years with him, but to is her commitment to the UNIACL. We mm -hmm. served many more, but in serving Marcus Garvey Jr., it was in a special time in the yeah. UNIA's history, particularly in the 21st century. Yeah. Brother Singo Baye, come on, brother. Yeah, bro. First of all, thank, thank you, my brother. You know, 
uh, when I came into UNIA, y'all, the first people <laughs> that I met was Baba Kili and the Kurumas, and Kurumas, Sewa, Sababu, and Sister Mary Bota. And there was plenty of others, but those folks, we've been sticking together forever. So some of the things I may share with you, you might have just heard from Mary. But the fact it maintains itself, it's an opportunity for us to share what we have recorded, because as Bob Akili said, we've learned a lot from our Secretary General about keeping things on paper. And before I get into my formal presentation, Marcus Garvey Jr. was the same way. He didn't like people using computers and all that kind of stuff. And he was an engineer. He preferred yes, for you to write them notes out. It's okay. All right, let me do my. Yeah, you're right, Mary. So I first met, I first met him in 1984 at the UNIACL convention held at Thomas W. Harvey Liberty Hall in Philadelphia, PA, where I met all of these great brothers and sisters that we're talking about, been working together for a while. You know, it's really interesting. The president general at the time was the Honorable Charles L. James, my major teacher, and myself being an, an active member for four years at that time, it was an honor to meet the firstborn son of our founder, the right excellent Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. In 1984, Garvey Jr. had published a pamphlet, and this is what he first put in my hand. It's called A Revitalization Program, 1984, the year to rebuild the UNIA. You see, Garvey Jr.'s passion was always, when I met him, is to try to help finish the work of his father and the great association, his mother, Amy Joss Garvey, and for our people because being an engineer, he saw a lot, traveled a lot, and was a science par excellence person. But he also had rough times in Jamaica, just like his father did, trying to push the same principles. So I'm not gonna go into that right now, but I will say this. It's very, very important to know that in 1987, while most of the members were celebrating the centennial of the, found, uh, of the birth of the right action honorable Marcus Mosiah Gavi, Marcus Gavi Jr. chose to go to Ghana, whereas the President General Honorable Charles L. James and a lot of delegates went to Jamaica, but Gavi and a contingency of UNIA people also went to Ghana. And I guess that had a lot to do with Gavi being Jamaican born himself and Gavi not liking some of the things he ran into in Jamaica, and I know that for a fact in terms of educating and teaching people, he was striving to do a lot of things there. So anyway, he moved to the United States and he was in the United States during most of the time when I got to know him and, and, and thereafter, but he had prior relationships in Jamaica. Anyway, that was very important. And in 1988, at the convention held in Chicago, Illinois, which I was present at, the UNC was officially introduced as a resolution by Marcus Garvey Jr. And I had the opportunity of talking to him about that. And he was strong on the fact about Amy Jocks Garvey's legacy as, as all of us are today about women being in leadership equal to us as brothers and being able to excel to any position that any one of us can excel to because it's very important to recognize that. Well, the UNIA always did and obviously Marcus Garvey Jr. knew something on a spiritual level about the Ankh. So anyway, the Ankh today is an official symbol of the UNIA, thanks to his vision of bringing that resolution forward. Now, in later years, while I was serving as the district commissioner of Maryland and DC and Virginia, and I was an active member of Division 330 as I am today, we brought Garvey Jr. to Washington, DC. And Sister Mary kind of spoke a little bit about some of that era, but I want to make it clear to you all. Thereafter, you know, I kind of really understood the passion of Marcus Garvey Jr. and his desire to move forward. I didn't know at that time, right that moment, that he was going to run for president general, but certainly we worked on the 20-point policy platform and started it, and it was presented in 1991 as Sister Mary said at the convention in Los Angeles, LA. Well, I also met Dr. Tony Martin at that time and Brother Renoko Rashidi. They were at that convention and many, many others. But Honorable Reginald Maddox was the president general then. And the 20 point policy platform was accepted at that time and was going to be further discussed in Washington DC the following year, my hometown, 
Banneker City, Washington, D.C., 1992. So I was extremely excited. We were hosting our first convention. So, and Marcus Garvey Jr. came to us in 1992 and talked to us about his desire to run for president general. And, you know, lo and behold, Mr. Maddox was a very powerful brother. And when he served with the Honorable Charles L. James, uh, and we loved him dearly. But when we heard that Marcus Garvey Jr. is gonna run for president general start in Washington, DC, we started talking over the differences, but we loved brother Maddox. And I wanna make that clear because sometimes people run against each other and they don't turn out to be loved by everybody or nor do they love each other, but that wasn't that case. Anyway, Marcus Garvey Jr. was, uh, was elected. Well, after he told me and brother Jackson Bay that he was gonna run and, 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 and kind of explain us some things about what he was going to strive to do. We kind of felt it was very important. And Honorable Charles L. James had, had, had pulled me aside and mentioned to me that Marcus Garvey Jr. certainly would probably be the next president general. And believe me, you all, that wasn't how everybody felt in the UNIA. However, Marcus Garvey Jr. ran and the, 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 the convention was held in Washington, D.C. at Howard University, in fact. And that, that was a legendary convention because it was the first ever held in Washington, D.C. So was the convention prior to that, the first one ever held in L.A. But at any rate, let's move forward. So we again at that convention in 1992, which was an election convention, finally approved the 20-point policy platform, which was very important because it dealt with specific issues that African people are confronted with and how the UNIA felt about them and was going to do about them. I'm not going to take the time to read all of those to you, but y'all know what I'm talking about when I say 20-point policy platform. Now, that's not necessarily our 20-point policy today, but certainly some of that is extremely relevant to what we're doing today and will be. So Marcus Garvey Jr. was elected president general at that convention, and Honorable Reginald Maddox was elected as, the first, as his first assistant. Now, let's move forward. In 1996, at the convention held in Philadelphia, PA, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. was re-elected to his second four-year term as President General. And at that particular time, I was elected as third Assistant President General, and Baba Akili, our President General, was elected as fourth Assistant President General, and Mama Mary Bolter and Sister Sewa and Krumah were appointed to serve on the parent body by Marcus Garvey Jr. And Dr. Leonard Jeffries was the keynote speaker at that banquet convention. And of course, I'm not going to go into detail. Y'all know Dr. Jeff, and uh, it, it, it was powerful. Let me fast forward into 2000. In 2000, the UNIA convention was held in Montreal, Canada, and the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. was re-elected to his third four-year term. And by the way, uncontested, uncontested four-year term as president general. And at the convention, <laughs> You know, it was powerful because we went through the entire constitution and amendments were done. That's a story for later. I'm not gonna get too into that. Also, Marcus Garvey Jr. bought a large Panamanian band up from New York. And I mean, we paid for them to come up from New York City to Canada. And it was a march through the Montreal streets like never before y'all. I mean, this is a memory that I will ever have forever. I, I, not only was I serving as third assistant president general, you know, because I was, I was reelected, but I had the honor of being personal security for the president general and marching through Canada and looking at Garvey Jr. and watching his pride. And I think we got some videos, or that, videos of that you may see later on and just watching him march and looking at his face. Yes. I, I'm telling y'all, it was when well, Mary, you was there. It was almost like Garvey Jr. had come to Montreal. Garvey Sr. had come back through his son and was marching through the streets of Montreal. And when we stopped, when we stopped and spoke, y'all, all, everybody in Montreal. Now, Montreal, Canada, has got a lot of black people, and 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 we have a Liberty Hall there. But everybody in Montreal was out in the streets watching us as we flew the red, black, and the green through the streets and applauding us. So anyway. Let me move forward. That was a very powerful memory of working with Marcus Garvey Jr. because that's the year that I really got to, really, 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 that, that was the four year term that I really got to see how the UNIA was being taken into the 21st century. So as Marcus Garvey, you know, uh, uh, Jr. 
marched in the parade and was so proud. And let me back up a little bit. He did the same march in Washington, D.C. with us at the parade. And also, before he was president general in L.A., the UNIA, yeah. you don't have to go back to the heyday. We had some great parades in the 90s. And yeah. I just want to I want to let you know that. Uh, now, as I begin to close, during the centennial in 1987, Marcus Garvey Jr. wrote a chapter in a book called The Silver Jubilee Year of the OAU. You know what I'm saying? And this was done in the UK and was published during the centennial, but it was honoring 25 years of the Organization of African Union. So it was essays in the honor of Kwame Nkrumah. Sister Mary read a little bit. I'm gonna share a little bit as I come to a close. Garvey's chapter was chapter seven, Garveyism and Africa's racial reconstruction. Marcus Garvey Jr. defined and clarified. African identity, African pride, African self-reliance, African economic power, African unity, both in the national and international sense, a great, and powerful central nation in Africa and the African image of God. That was very important, brothers and sisters. And, and so, so in closing, let me say, I didn't only meet with Marcus Garvey Jr. I had debates with my brother Marcus Garvey Jr. on things that we didn't necessarily totally come to one on and agree. But you know what? I learned from him a lot. And he learned a lot from me. And that's one of the traits of a leader. Some people thought that you couldn't talk to our good brother, Marcus Garvey Jr. I'm telling y'all, that's not true. We had knocked down telephone calls for hours on certain subject matters. And even though we may not agree, we were able to reason and learn from one another. And that was a big lesson for me because I didn't know how the son of Marcus Garvey Jr. was going to respond to me disagreeing with him. But guess what? We continued to work through that last four years with no problem. And unfortunately, I happened to be one of the first people I think on the parent body who recognized signs of dementia setting in, in Philadelphia. But I wanna clear and make the record straight. Garvey served three four-year terms, even though toward the ending of his last third. term, last third, his, his third term in the last few years, he was ill. He did not resign. Mm -hmm. He did not get removed. He finished his term. But thanks to the leadership of the parent body at that time, uh, brother, uh, Honorable Redmond Battle and Brother Pierre, Randy Pierre, and the rest of the parent body, Mary Bolton, and all of us, we carried the we carried the ball and we didn't alarm everybody because we knew Sister Jean was going to take care of Marcus Garvey Jr., Jean Garvey, his wife, and that's how it ended. But I want to make it the record clear. He served all 12 years. So thank you, Baba Kili. I hope you all got some inspiration from what Mary and I have shared. And hopefully, I don't know if everybody else will be as long as her and I were, but, <laughs> but, but I learned so much about the right excellent honorable Marcus Garvey Sr. from working with Marcus Garvey Jr. Because the bloodline was real, y'all. It was yeah. real. It was very real and nobody tried to do anything negative That's with right. us in those 12 years. That's right. Now, of course, I've been in the UNI before that, and I've been in the UNI after that. And there have been a whole lot of people lick booting folks trying to do whatever. But everywhere, everywhere we, we ain't lost no love with nobody. So without any further ado, I say one God, one aim, one destiny. One destiny. Asante, San and Singo, I say you, your rendition of those years is brings back memories. As they should, I see you also have yours written down. So make sure Mary Bolton gets a copy of that for our Thank archives. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, um, 
it's extremely important that um, you get a chance to see Marcus Garvey Jr. from the eyes of those who work on a regular basis with him within the framework of the UNI ACL because he was unique in a lot of ways. He was very positive in a lot of ways. He was a challenge in a lot of ways, but he was a brother that brought something special to the UNI ACL. That he did. Um, although not in existence because he had not been born when they taught the course of African philosophy, it was taught to him by Amy Jacques Garvey. She raised the warrior, and his, he definitely was his father's son. Uh, Sister Sewa? Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good. I'm here. I'm here. You can see me too now, right? I can't see you, but I know I see your name. So oh, okay. Sister. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Speak, I Sister, am. on your, your time with Marcus Garvey Jr. Okay. Um, uh, I, uh, like Sangor, I was uh, in the UNIA, and of course, you were there, Brother Achille. Uh, Sangor, I remember Sangor coming to join, and of course, Mary, we were all friends. Uh, and in the uh, 80s, the beginning of the 80s, Marcus Garvey Jr. would come to yeah. convention, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, he he always um, had something to say, and you know he he was clear he wanted to be a part of the UNI ACL. So his persistence paid off. Now um, he was elected president general in 1992, I believe it was, but in his second term uh, during the convention in Philadelphia, 1996, I was honored that uh, he asked me my name to be the second assistant secretary general. So I worked with Sadie Madison and Mary Bota as the second assistant secretary general. And um, I uh, want to say, yes, he provided strong leadership. Uh, many of the things that Mary said, Mary and Singor said, and definitely he made the Ankh the symbol of our organization. Um, I uh, sometimes I prefer to look at things maybe through a humorous light because he's very strong in his leadership, strong in his opinions. But um, I do remember that Sister Agnes Blount and and sisters um, have mercy. I can't think of the other Secretary General. Ag 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 Agnes Alma Golden. Golden. Alma Golden. Yes. When he was in, when he was conducting a meeting, if they thought that he was getting too far beyond himself, they would, they would definitely have something to say about it. And they, and uh, you know, I figured he was raised by these ladies here, and he had ultimate respect for them. And if they, if they had an opinion, he'd, he'd stop and listen, listen to what they had to say. But uh, they said it was a de definitely an honor working for. Marcus Garvey Jr. and his and his interest in furthering the aims of his father's organization. That is, it's, it's it was wonderful that he had that he had that interest and that um, I don't know. Except when I when I first met him, I said, oh, "Gee, this is honorable." You know, you come to the you come to the UNI and you hear about Marcus Mosiah Garvey, and now you have his son coming forward. So it was just an honor to honor to be asked, an honor to work for him for the uh, well, the uh, six years, probably six years that I worked for him as second assistant secretary general. You're Sister muted, Barbara. Why, I got you. So, to say why you're done? I am done. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, this these are people who touched the life of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. and work with him. I now have Sister Brenda. Are you there? Sister Brenda? Okay. <laughs> Say why mute yourself. Okay. <laughs> Sister Brenda. If I don't have Sister Brenda, I have a brother who not technically in that realm of the UNIA, but technically in the UNIA, the brother know who I'm talking about. His his key thing says North America. But let me see if I can say this name correctly. 
you know, because I probably say it a whole bunch of times in a whole different kind of ways. So just give me a minute here. Amist my Amistad? You got to unmute yourself to correct me. I'm Seda. <laughs> no, I want him to correct me. Come on. I'm Seda. I'm Seda. I'm Seda. I'm Seda. I'm Seda. I'm Seda. Sata. Sata. Right. Got it right now? I'm Sata. Right. How many times have you taught me how to say that? All right, I'm going to try to make this the last time. <laughs> well, my wife corrects me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Your turn, my brother. Please let's Oh, okay. Um, I had the first place. I, I thank you for this opportunity to talk about a, a, a and is he Marcus Garvey Jr. or Marcus Garvey the third? Marcus Garvey Jr. is what we know him as. Okay, what he thought, chose to call himself. Okay, okay, because I think his father was also Jr. But okay, let's talk. But but, but I come at it from a slightly different angle. Certainly, because uh, I've been a Garveyite. Um, I, I marked it since 1970 in front of 125th Street, a bookstore uh, with, with brother uh, Cecil uh, Braff, or Lombe Braff, and, he, and I was talking about being a Pan-Africanist, and he said, if you're a Pan-Africanist, you've got to read this book over here, and he's pointing to philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. So uh, can I share my screen? I could, is, that, is that possible? Brother Heyru? Um, yes. OK, let me do that. Let me, maybe I could talk from that. Uh, I shared some things with. Um, let me see. Okay, hello? Hello, I can uh, hear you. Okay. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Yeah, you can now. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was in uh, Congress of Racial Equality from 1967 to 1975. And from 1971, I was on the national staff as director of political affairs. Uh, but I was a part of the team that, that, that made CORE a nationalist pan-Africanist organization as a young man. And this issue of CORE magazine was dedicated to uh, Garvey. And I just, I just have a few things in here. That's, and I shared it with people, but I just want to point out a couple of things in it. It has an interview of actually it was an article by me at the time, 26 year old me on Gar Gar Core and Garveyism and the relationship between it. Uh, and But then there's a interview, which you actually done by Gary Brown, who happens to be my brother of Thomas Harvey. He went to Philadelphia and, interview, and, and, and interviews him. And then there's another interview that was done in 1969 of, uh, of Marcus Garvey. And I was listening to the five, the, the seven points and uh, at the end, he talks about five points, which it, so he built on them. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, he, but he was still talking about the need for, the, is, is one of the central points of Garvey, but uh, Marcus Garvey, his father, for a central na nation for the race. Mm -hmm. uh, the reemergence of Africa as a world power, which is what we, you know, as you people know, I'm the coordinator for the Pan-African Fellows Movement in North America. And that's our mission to bring in the United African States. But, but it, I see it in direct, alignment with Garvey's African fundamentalism when he calls for in it, the building of an African empire on which the sun shall never set. So um, anyway, that's back in, six, six, this article was written in 1969 and it, and it went into Core Magazine at that time. Now my personal relationship, let me just go a couple of things on that. Um, okay, in 1973, Brother uh, Solomon Goodrich. I'm trying to look, bring this picture up. He was, I was director of political affairs and so Solomon Goodrich was in charge of uh, international affairs, uh, like secretary of state. And he went to, he didn't have his, he didn't have this great beard that he see now, this is 1987. <laughs> but, but in 1973, he didn't have, a, he had all black hair. He was, in fact, he was, uh, if I'm um, 26, he's about, just about pushing 40. But he went down to Jamaica to a conference, five-day conference, where he talked with, it, 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 where he talked with both Garvey's sons and the mother, and he came back to court and was reporting to us back on that. And uh, he uh, he knew Garvey Jr. and Senior, and um, he he knew, he knew Marcus Garvey and Julius before, but he really befriended him then, and that's when I, I began to, to to have an association with him. But it was really through Solomon Goodrich at that time. This picture is taken. 
uh, at an event that Solomon Goodrich put, put together in 1987 on the centennial of uh, Marcus Garvey's birthday. And we were at that event. And then you could see this Solomon Goodrich, uh, Marcus Garvey Jr. and myself. Uh, let me, there's an easy way to do this. And then I can, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just bear with me. Okay, good. This is perfect. Okay. Okay. When so when he when, he, when so Solomon was at was at Gar at Garvey Jr.'s marriage, his his wedding, and I wanted to be there. I couldn't be there, but I wrote a telegram and, and it delivered it to Solomon Goodrich in it. And I said, uh, with recognition of the imperative of African redemption and the reemergence of Africa as a world power, I bring hearty congratulations and best wishes to, to the future, marital bliss, and, <clears throat> and consolidated spirit of our illustrious ancestors uh, from the previous 7,000 years, uh, <clears throat> and bring everlasting blessings to your marriage, Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. So I was a little wordy, but uh, I, was, um, <laughs> I was trying to bring everything I could to, to this brother, uh, Marcus Garvey Jr. Uh, in his wedding, and it, it, and I got a response back. This is uh, from his wife, Jean. You know, we wish to express and, and thank you for your kind gesture and your good wishes. Much is appreciated, for taking the time to recognize uh, <clears throat> and ask continued support. And that's a picture of him. And that's a picture of him and, and Jean when they first got married. Um, and this was another event. I, I noticed the six tenths so was right around the 50th anniversary of Marcus Garvey's passing. He passed in June. Of, of uh, 1940, right. but uh, but I, we were at this event. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he signed the uh, his his picture in his in his uh, article. I think it was probably another event that Solomon put together. Okay, now this is um, he and I at um, at, at the GME. It, it, it was a conference that was put together in Albany, New York, in the year 2000. Uh, Garvey, Malcolm, and Nkrumah, and the New Millennium. Uh, my DBA, United Africa by 2020, and SUNY uh, organized a conference. I had already written a paper called Garvey, Malcolm, and Nkrumah, uh, uh, United Africa by 2020, Garvey, Malcolm, the synergy of Garvey, Malcolm, and Nkrumah. And then the, the university went off on that theme and put together a conference. And we invited Marcus Garvey Jr., um, Tony Martin, and a number of other people. So this is a picture of us there. And this is another picture of him talking, and I'm standing in the back. And then here's same conference. Here's his wife Jean, and here's me and his wife Jean again. Um, so that's 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 another conference, and that's another issue. That's that's Jeffrey. Dr. Sutherland, Dr. Dr. Uh, Jeffries. Jeffries. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's basically what I wanted to share. So let me get out of that, and out of that, <laughs> and out of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and back to this. Okay, all right. So, it, a couple of things. One, it's ironic. I happen, I happen to be wearing the ankh, and and I heard you. It, it, the ankh is a symbol of of Garvey, of, uh, of of the UNIA. And I remember, in particular, I was listening to uh, either Singor or the, or the President General talking about how you could see the uh, Garvey Senior shining through Garvey Junior. Yeah, I remember in particular, it was an event in Albany and I ended up on the stage somehow. I don't know how I ended up on the stage. Cause I guess, cause I was very strong Garveyite and very strong Pan-Africanist people, you know, that people knew me as, as that. So maybe that's how I ended up on the stage. But on the stage was, was Tony Martin. Can you close uh, your screen out? Close your screen out, Amsada. Oh. Uh, Still showing on Facebook. We want to see you. Okay, let me see. Uh, Yes, I want to. Uh, yeah, uh, let me see. You're right. Anyway. <laughs> okay, this is technology. This, this is where the technology. Is. I'm, you, I, close, close your. All you do is close it. Close it. You can close your computer screen, not not to go off, but just mm -hmm. close that. Hmm. Hey, Ru, help him out. Showing on uh, Facebook. That's showing on Facebook. Right. 
Oh, I don't want that to show on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, clo close it close out. Close it out. You just have to stop screen sharing. Okay. Let's do this quick now. I don't want to take up too much time on this. So go where you shared the screen and unshare. Yes. Right. Same place you went to share, go unshare. Okay, not to have silence on Facebook Live. Keep working, but keep talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep working, but keep talking. So don't stop talking. I'm Seta. I'm Seta. Okay. It's at the bottom of your screen, but keep talking so we can hear you. You go ahead, Achille. You on the screen now, Achille. I, I don't know what happened there. Okay. I'm, I'm Seta is muted, so... Okay, so Ansetta can absolutely come back. Um, so since I'm on the screen, geez, I can't even see that. It's my experience with Marcus Garvey Jr. is, I guess, incorporated in everything I've heard you say or that was said about him. Uh, but I have some strong memories. I remember us having a conversation about computers. And Marcus Garvey Jr. said, never trust a computer that you don't build. Okay, I'm not an engineer. So I said to him, how did we build a computer? Ah. There we go. There we go. I see you now, single. I don't see I'm Seta. No, no. He, he, he's, I he's don't know. There, he's there. He's there. He's there. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, he's there. So, okay. Let me, can I f finish what? Yes, finish go ahead. I I knew you, go ahead. I knew you wanted right. to do that. Okay. Good. You can see me now and be all back. See, yeah, we all back. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey, technology. Okay. All right. I would, when you were talking about seeing Garvey through Marcus Garvey Jr., it reminded me of an event in Albany when I was on the stage with him, Tony Martin, Asante, uh, and one other brother. And we all were speaking. But I remember looking over at Garvey Jr. because I always, you know, I had a kind of a, uh, it, 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 the flesh and blood of Marcus Garvey always impressed me, you know. So I remember looking over at him, and he was in a very serious looking, very serious looking. I think he might have been taking notes. And I was thinking, and I was able to see Marcus Garvey Senior through him. I was, say, I was saying he was being a studious, just just as, as his father would have been. And um, I was really able to see him uh, through his father, see his father through him at that point. Um, he was uh, a, 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 I, when I when when I met him at the uh, conference that I talked about in two thousand. He was then president general of the UNIA, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, the 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 previous times when I've talked about him back in sixty nine and eighty seven, he was not president general. So I first came in association with him before he became president general. Um, but I would see him in Harlem all the time. It 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 it, it um it it, it with his brother uh, at um Sylvia's uh, restaurant. We'd, we'd run into each other. We'd always talk. Um, and uh, he was a very warm brother. So my relationship with him uh, was different because I wasn't actually in uh, working with him as a member of the UNIA, which I, you know, of course, which I respected. But it was, um, but I was a Garvey and have been a Garvey for over 50 years. So I recognized his significance and I was very happy when I heard he became president general of the UNIA. I did note that. And, um, we always had a good conversations because we was able to talk on the same line about his, uh, in detail about God, about his father, philosophy and opinions. Um, uh, very strong brother, uh, very anchor of the Garvey movement, needless to say, and he will be um, sorely missed, but, but, but never forgotten. Uh, his spirit's gonna be with us for a long time, like right along with his father. So, Ashe. Mm. Ashe. Okay, thank you. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Thank you also for the screen sharing and seeing that picture of a younger you makes you want to find some pictures <laughs> of ourselves. But one of yeah, the things, and, and all of that stuff I, I shared with the group. So you, okay. so you in, including the uh, mag, the uh, core magazine with the interviews. Excellent, and 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 it helps kind of stimulate my own thought process as it relates to Marcus Garvey Jr. Seeing him first as the president of the Brooklyn Division, and that's how I met him. Berkeley, president of the Brooklyn Division, of which I also became a member under his presidency of the Brooklyn Division. It's where I kind of 
had some, how could you say, personal contact with Sister Margaret Lamb, Sister Alma Golden, who gave Marcus Messiah Garvey a serious challenge most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I I said it politely most of the time because <laughs> she had been uh, working with the UNIA since she was like nine, ten years old and they actually had pictures of her in her uniform so she had she was old school as our terminology would be today I don't know what we would have said 20 years ago she was old school and she lived at old school and she looked for him to live it the same way but Marcus Messiah Garvey had a different vision move forward, which is why when he said, you never trust a computer you can't build. And I'm saying like, well, I can't build a computer, but it's the common thing. He said, yes, if you can't build it, then you don't know that you can trust it. So I said, can you build it? And he said, I can build it. That's why I can trust it. Okay. So now I need to know how you build it so that I can trust it so that we can work together on it. Uh, I was truly honored to serve with him not even before becoming fourth assistant president general. Marcus Messiah Garvey brought, Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. brought something to the UNIA that I don't think the Negro race appreciated. It wasn't just him doing his father's work. It was him realizing that we as a people needed to elevate our struggle. He came at a time which was after Black Power Movement had started. The Panther Party had had its day. There were so many things that had taken place differently than when his father arrived on the scene. He had different entities to deal with, to incorporate, to try to reckon with, to try to unify, to try to bring to bearance on the ultimate goal of a united African government, a united African nation that spoke and speaks for African people worldwide, truly was his mission. His focus on the Constitution was because he also realized, as we do today, that there are things that need to move the Constitution for you because the Constitution is a living, breathing document. It's not just something our ancestors gave us in 1920. It's something we, in 2020, have to make sure we are moving forward with it because amendments and other Articles of the Constitution need to be addressed. That's what Mary spoke to. It's what Marcus Garvey had conversations about and talked about and worked for. Being his fourth assistant president general was an amazing adventure. I, like Mary, walked with him in Detroit in the Garvey Day Parade. He was challenged. He wanted a bigger parade. He wanted a bigger parade. We didn't understand at that time, the need to put him publicly in a situation where his message was on every news media platform available, because that's how we needed to reach the race. So the lesson that his father taught us about propaganda, mm. where as we worked to make sure that we were prepared, we were not doing the proper propaganda along with him. And I truly believe he recognized it. And that's why I believe when he did things in Canada is because he was trying to move us on that world stage. He was trying to touch the community and the people where we are and then elevate us. So he gave us that essence. It was magnificent to feel the essence of Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. And I give you a classic one. When he ran for president general here in Philadelphia, he came to the Marcus Garvey Shule of Positive Education, which is the institution that the Nkrumah family had started, which is educating children of African descent. He came and he said there had been a mistake made and he wanted to correct it. He did. But then he also looked at the institution and said, this is what we need to ensure that our children carry the message. I see that in independent institutions today. We have a young man that's with us. I'm sure we'll speak about his teachings, Brother Sam. The reality mm -hmm. is we still are on that platform. I'm committed, not just as president general, because I was committed to the movement before I wore a title. 
even before I wore a title of fourth assistant president general under Thomas W. Harvey, who was my principal teacher, mm -hmm. I was his first vice president. So when your brother did the article on him in Philadelphia, I was there. Yeah, I probably met you then because I, I was I met him, I met him in right. Philadelphia also even before right. my brother did the article. So I probably saw you then. Right. And <laughs> you probably wouldn't know me now by, for that picture. <laughs> right. But understand, th the reality is, is how you have to move. You see, that's why this tribute that we give based on our experiences, our challenges, Singor spoke about the phone calls. I was in meetings on conference calls in Brooklyn because I was in Philadelphia. And I will tell you, he was a task master. I think yeah. Mary would agree. He was a task master in his division, but he got challenged in his division by the mm -hmm. older members in the division that say, wait a minute, you, you knew. You you a youngster. And he was like, well, you know, like I'm I'm 40 years old. You you still a youngster. You know, and, and I paraphrase the number on his age. I would not ever give that up. But the object was you could see it. What I embodied and what I believed is that we had been able to put the right emphasis. We would have elevated the movement with Markham Saragari. Because remember, that's his commitment. His commitment was to do his father's work, to continue his work. His father's work was raising the race. He wanted to raise the race. It was not to revitalize the UNIA ACL. It was to raise the racial consciousness through the UNIA ACL and then move us toward the government that he wanted to do. You see, I was also beneficial that in 2014, as the first assistant president general under single by a to draft an article of emeritus to commit Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. to be president general emeritus, president general for life, mm -hmm. because it was truly an honor that he deserved. Senghor said he served this 12 years. Marcus Garvey Jr. serves his life. And we always should be remembered, not just as the seventh president general, but as the president general emeritus, that he was president general up until the time he transitioned to the ancestral realm. And since I see life to life, mm -hmm. I don't count him as dead. I still count him as the emeritus president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, the Rehabilitating Committee of 2020. And some may say, how do you get the Rehabilitating Committee? Because the UNIA at the time needed to be rehabilitated, so decided by Thomas W. Harvey in 1940, so decided now in 2020 by the men and women that you've heard from on this call because we have to go forward in raising the racial consciousness and then developing the government of African people worldwide. There is no other way for us to do it, no other point that should be made about it. We have to do that. That is our commitment to Marcus Messiah Garvey. That is our commitment to the Garvey family. That is our commitment to the race. We are committed to the race. We are raising it up. When Garvey gave us the motto, one God, one aim, one destiny, he gave us a marching order. One guy for all of us, I care not what you call him. One aim, African freedom, an African government, one destiny, liberation. That's our trust. That's where we have to move. That's where we have to go. And that's what the UNIA ACL RC 2020 is committed to. Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. lives in the whirlwind, but he lives in what we are. Because he was, we are. There's an African saying that says, I am because you are, and because you are, therefore I am. In each of us, an African mind will be the basis for anything African. Nothing African can be created without an African mind that is created. That's the commitment of Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. And it's the cross we bear to do the liberation and freedom of our people. I'm going to not take so long. I know I get a chance to speak at some other points. Uh, Brother Heyru, pictures. Well, wow. that was awesome, PG. <laughs> that that was awesome, and that 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 is that is a great reflection. Brother Heyru, time for the slides, bro. Pictures. Yep, time for the slides. So I'm going to step away for a minute. I got you. All right. Well, y'all, brother, you know, I hope everybody really uh, felt and heard 
what uh, PG was saying. Uh, but here comes the pictures and we're gonna try to, you know, share these and we want everybody to know that these pictures are not just gonna be shown this time, they'll be around. All right. Okay, Haru. He's working on it. Yeah. yeah he... Baba Mose. Meanwhile, meanwhile. <laughs> Well, you I just want to I, I, I just want to say to everybody, yeah. Uh, Sigor, can, Sigor, can, can you see the screen? Yeah, we see the screen, but no pictures. Wait a minute, just, you should be showing. Show screen. No, it's no, it's not. It's not. Uh, this is this oh. probably his screen. It's not, it's not uh Haru. Uh Okay, well, like I was saying, Baba Mosi, I, I know you heard a lot of what was said. I can't, can, y'all can hear me. I, I don't know whether it's coming through on Facebook, I but uh, y'all, Facebook people, y'all, please bear with us. Brother Heru, if you can't get it up, man, we need to leave that because that's all that's showing up right now on the stream. Heru? It's in your media file and you need hey, to. Hey, Heru, Heru. Hey, Rue, if you can't pull them up, hey, Ru, let's leave it. No, I have the photos. It's, it's, it's she, you see she the screen now. No, sir. We don't see anything. It's white. It's white on Facebook. It's white on ours. You just got your, your, your page up. There's no pictures. Okay, I have to see what happened. All right, well, pull out. Pull out. Let's go back to Yeah, thank you. Uh, apologize. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, I guess some of us uh, can do. The general comes back. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to say something, Baba Mosi? No, I was saying you, you had your screen froze, so I was uh, saying some of us should mute. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, if you're not talking, everybody should always mute. If you're not, if you're not talking, mute, please. Yeah. So, but what I want to do right now. Uh, is try to find out what's the, yeah, I'm back up on. <laughs> so what I wanna do is open up the floor for, for, for a few folks. And uh, I, I want to, I know Dr. Chenzera is here. Uh, I don't think we have Dr. Horn here, but I want to open up the floor to various different other parent body people that wanna share something at this point in the juncture. And then we wanna hear from some of our other brothers and sisters that wanna talk about not, not just yesterday, but today and going forward with vision. And the president general is going to open up the discussion and I'm doing it right now until he returns. And then we're going to move if we can't get to the pictures. But what I want to do is ask uh, uh, either Dr. Chenzera, I think she's here with us, uh, our high commissioner general of the Caribbean and of, uh, uh, Central America. Are you here, Dr. Chen? I am here, Renee's family. Just give me one moment. So All right, sure, 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 sure. So, uh, let me see if I can share it now. Hold on for one minute. Oh, a few seconds. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. coming up. There we go. You got it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we. All right. Well. Oh, they're moving fast though. I can't. I didn't have a chance to deal with that first one, man. Go. Go back. Go back. Go back, Haru. They're going too fast, man. Uh, you, well, anyway, just go ahead and run through it. Run through it. Run through it. Because I, I, I'm not going to be able to uh, narrate it. But that's Marcus Garvey Jr., you all, as you know. Marcus Garvey Jr., again. Brother Jackson Bay, Sister Quahara, well, Lady President of UNIA with myself and Garvey. Jackson Bay, William Henry Jackson Bay, and Marcus Garvey Jr. Marcus Garvey Jr. Now this is at uh, a, a William Henry Jackson Bay's home going service, Jackson Bay around 1997.
beside him is Jackson Bay's sister-in-law. That's that's Canada. That's Montreal, Canada. I believe, or New York City. It might be New York. No, that's New York City. When we marched to New York City after the Marcus Garvey Day, Al Sharpton right there beside him. Right. And Gene Garvey. Uh, that's Brother Pierre standing in the doorway and me and Marcus Garvey Jr. Myself and Marcus Garvey Jr. In Philadelphia. Myself and Marcus Garvey Jr. Yeah, that's correct, Mary. Liberty Hall, outside of Liberty Hall. Mm -hmm. That one is. And that's Brother Battle, Sewa, and Zama Cook in the background, Brother Battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, Brother Zama, Brother Battle, President General Battle, President General Garvey Jr. Garvey, it's all up. That's all Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. All Philadelphia. Marcus Garvey Jr. Oh, that's a nice picture of Marcus Garvey Jr. It is yeah. a nice picture. Our share person, a lot of people in Washington, D.C. With, with Marcus Garvey Jr. Jackson Bay, myself, Marcus Garvey Jr. That might have been in LA, I'm not sure. Uh, of course, New York City. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jeffries, Gene Garvey, Al Sharpers, Marcus Garvey Jr. May Ferguson, Marcus Garvey Jr., uh, President General Battle. Queen Mother Moore, Marcus Garvey Jr., Brother Zama Cook and I were at this event in New York where Marcus Garvey Jr. honored a lot of people. Dr. Tony Martin was there as well. Outside Liberty Hall, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now, this was the event I was just telling you about. There's Julius Garvey, a whole lot of people up in there. Solomon Goodrich. I think uh, 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 Edward Brown might have been at, I'm sorry, might have been at this event. But you got Alma Golden, you got G2 Weiss, Waiusi, uh, Queen Mother Moore, Marcus Garvey Jr., Solomon Goodridge, Julius Garvey, Tony Martin was also at this event. This was in uh, 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 New York City. Outside uh, Liberty Hall, that's quite a few people. Maddox, Predator General Maddox, a whole lot of people in there that are now ancestors, very powerful picture. A lot of them still here too. But Bishop Franzo King in the background, a tall brother behind Brother Maddox and Gene Slap. And they're gonna marry both to bend it down over another end. Uh, brother Jackson Bay, Marcus Garvey Jr. and Brother Maddox. This is in Washington, DC. This is the convention in Washington, DC. Outside Liberty Hall again. There go me, got my finger up in the air. <laughs> oh, there, brother Leroy, brother Leroy Jackson, Legionnaires over on the end with the suit, plaid suit. Here went, he to, is. Went, went to Africa, went to Africa and brought back herbs. Say he don't need no doctor's pills. He dealt with African herbs. Sadie Madison's uncle, brother Wally Muji, President General, brother Jackson Bay on the end. There's, that's Howard University, I believe. Marcus Garvey Jr. spoke there in 1993 with Dr. Tony Martin, the last poets, Dr. John Henry Clark. It was a very powerful event. Last poets were there. That's outside of Roots Activity Learning Center. That's Division 330. There's a lot of ancestors there up on the front row, uh, along with Marcus Garvey Jr. That's in the whirlwind, Kalaja Lushagoon, Baba Rafo, Brother Jackson Bay, and, uh, and Brother Kamal Robinson, and a lot of the other brothers and sisters are still here. Congo, Brother Congo, for our, our uh, for current uh, uh, second vi uh, for, uh, vice president of Division 330. Whoa, that's a powerful one there. These are the yeah. elder sisters. Ruth Smith, Marcus Garvey yeah. Jr., Mae Ferguson, and I forgot my other sister's name, but they were all powerful, powerful, powerful sisters Sister in the UNIA. Name was Sister Maud. There you go. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Gene Slappy, Marcus Garvey Jr. Yeah. Gene Slappy is the daughter of Thomas W. Harvey. Mm -hmm. 
Whoa, Baba Kili, Battle, Gene Slappy, Marcus Garvey Jr., myself, May Ferguson, Saywire and Krumah, Mary Bolton, Stady Madison. This was in uh, 1996, I believe. Billy, really? yeah. Again, beautiful yes. picture, beautiful picture. Look at them African yes. warriors, man. Our yes. ancestors are still alive. Like Barbara, uh, President General says, life to life. Right. Life to life. They the day in the hereafter. They in the world win with the right ex honorable Marcus Mosai Garvey coming back with the millions of ancestors we don't know to take charge in our movement. We say our ancestors are waiting and watching, but our ancestors are also in many of us. Is that the last picture? Oh, Minister Farrakhan, Khalid Muhammad, Gene Slappy, and uh, uh, Charles Thank L. You. James. Everybody is gone except for Minister Farrakhan in this picture. This was in Chicago in 1986 at the okay. banquet. At the banquet. Okay. Where that's a powerful one there, y'all. And I was there. I was doing security. I mean, that's when Charles L. James told me a lot of stories. But that I think he's ending on, I think that's the last one. But but this picture here is monumental because Minister Farrakhan was the keynote speaker at the banquet. Many people said he wasn't gonna come, but he came with 50 soldiers who sat on the steps. Honorable Charles L. James was there, Marcus Garvey Jr. This is when Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan said that for him. Marcus Garvey was his grandfather. That's what he said, right yeah. there. I was That's there. Nice. Yeah, and uh, Khalid Muhammad was right there. You know, Khalid Muhammad was the keynote speaker at the banquet in 1991 in Los yeah. Angeles, where he came with yeah. his white suit on. Yeah. With soldiers also. Fruit of Islam. Mm -hmm. So anyway, brothers and sisters, I, I don't know whether PG is back, but that that was a, a great a great pictorial. Uh, shared by, by our brother, Brother Zama Cook, and uh, we got a lot. I want to let give y'all an announcement. We have a YouTube page now, and we're going to be rolling out some information so you can actually see that our ancestors are still living. Now, our brother Farouk Muhammad uh, with our Council General, Adnia Rogers. We also put up a video just recently of Conrad Worrell, our ambassador of reparations, who's now an ancestor who left us, uh, you know, earlier part of uh, last year. Uh, well, last year he left us and went before us, but certainly that video is up right now on the UNIA uh, 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 YouTube. And uh, Zama, if you're on, if you could put it in the chat so people can know how to get to it. But you can just pull up YouTube and put in there UNIA uh, uh, ACL RC 2020 and it should come up. But brothers and sisters, I'm telling y'all, you know, we honoring Marcus Garvey Jr. today. We're going to honor Tony Martin soon in March, but we know the legacy because we were with those who lived that life while they were here. It's not about me, he or she, it's about we, collectivity, and the consistency of the UNIA government is continuing to go forward. So I wanna thank you all for, for, sh for, for allowing us to share those pictures with you. And thank you, Brother Amseta, Mwali Mu Amseta, for sharing your personal relationship with uh, Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr. And the reason we say that is because that's what he wanted to be called by. We know about all the other names. I could tell you about three or four different middle names that they say. They say that he, he his real name was Marcus uh, 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 Marcus Jocks Garvey. So, but that's fine. I mean, that's a, that's fine. I ain't got no problem with that. But Marcus Garvey Jr. told us his name was Marcus Garvey Jr. And that's who we relate to, Marcus Garvey Jr. Whether or not his father was uh, 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 Marcus Mosiah Garvey uh, Jr., it's an Where African tradition. Let me let me finish, bro. No, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm saying from now on, based on what you've told me, that's what that's how I'm gonna go. Oh, oh no 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 no. We re, we respect all of those names because you mm -hmm. can be called many names. So don't I don't want you to get me wrong. What I'm saying to you is, I personally spoke to him, and, and he wanted us to call him Marcus Garvey Jr. But well, that's and good enough for me. Now now in his transition, I don't disagree with anybody that says he has mm -hmm. another name. But we uh, uh know that when he was serving as President General. He wrote his name as Marcus Garvey Jr. And okay. that's how we got to deal with it. But but at the same token, you know, I know people who have different uh, uh, juniors. I know some women who were juniors. I don't want to get into that. But the reality is Africans, we can do and be called what we want. My name is Alvin G. Ricks, but I'm also best known to you all as Senghor Jawara Baye. But I'm also Senghor Jawara Kamara Baye. And I'm also Senghor Jawara Kamara Haru Baye. So... What I'm saying to you, brother, I'm saying is I appreciate what you shared, and I'm just trying to give people clarity. You know, 
You got plenty of names. People got nicknames. You are you you are a junior, but you're also Wally Wamsetta. And 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 all of us have to respect what people want to be called, mm -hmm. as well as the spiritual names that are given to us. So mm -hmm. I don't we don't we don't take no prisoners over right or wrong. Mm -hmm. He was all of that and more. Just like people say Marcus Mosiah Garvey was not named Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I mean, they say his name was Marcus Malchus, you know. So hey, that's no big thing to us. We know the person. And we know the work. That's the right. main thing we want to articulate right here. So we love everybody and we're not throwing no stones at everybody. But I want to open the door up to some younger brothers. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I got to go back to my good sister. I know she got some real powerful energy to share. Dr. Chenzera, thank you for uh, allowing us to show those uh, pictures. Uh, now, if you can come up right now, please do and share with us uh, some of the vibrations that you may be feeling and not only the vibrations you may be feeling, you know, whatever you wish to share with us right now, because we're talking about trans, we're not just talking about yesterday, our story is current. We're making her story history right now. So without any further ado, our High Commissioner General of Central America and the Caribbean, Dr. Jenzerat. It's nice family and I first asked for that permission from the elders to keep moving these words sound power and strength that are going to be shared first and foremost. I just need to get an ashe. 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 And ashe the, the vibration with the Honorable Marcus Scarby Jr. has a very personal reference in space. There was a significant amount of respect throughout every vestige in the world, yes, and persons knowing him as a youth, referencing his greatness and attempting to carry on the torch that his father and mother left. Everyone knew that was beyond, beyond, because many times we desire our children to carry our legacy. And sometimes that legacy is a little bit heavy to bear. So I share from the various houses, the various Pan-African, Black nationalists, progressive, reparation, and other types of uplifting organizations in the Caribbean, that there's been this thrust to honor and respect, first and foremost, the fact that Marcus Messiah, La Otra, Marcus Garvey Jr. was attempting to carry on this legacy that in of itself requires a moment of reflection and a significant, a significant reminder that each and every one of us has our responsibility to carry this legacy forward. Whether it's in Barbados, Guyana, San Andreas, amongst the high South people, even places like Nicaragua, even places like Panama, Costa Rica, Honduras, Belize, Republica Dominicana, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Virgin Islands, Antigua, Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Dominica. And I wanted to take a minute so the persons can let that sink in because it's a serious impact that he had not only in Jamaica, but some persons think his influence was only in Jamaica. His influence was literally around the globe. In this region, yes, but around the globe. Persons are speaking his word, sound, power, and strength in places like Papua New Guinea, in places like Vanuatu. And I could say this because we've heard that and we've seen it. So we really are giving a tribute to his memory as yes. the initiatives that he brought forward through a variety of circles of attempting to do that reiteration of what his father <laughs> established, but more importantly, taking this work to young people, not so young people, to make this initiative of one God, one aim, one destiny truly become into real lifetime fruition to bring this African fundamentalism so that it's spread like wildfire throughout the earth. 
there was an elder in Virgin Gorda, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention specifically not only the Virgin Islands U.S., but the Virgin Islands British, yeah? There was an elder, his name, his given name is Charles, was Charles Keeper. We knew him as Baba and Wokioji. And Baba and Wokioji had this relationship with Marcus Garvey Jr. that most of us weren't aware of because we just, we just knew that was Baba and Wokioji and he talked Africa and he bring up Ting. But this elder who had the pleasure of living a similar life well into his late ages, early nineties in Virgin Gorda shared with us the photographs, the newspaper articles. He was a, a bibliophile that actually documented all of the various works of Marcus Garvey Jr., of course, of his father, but of others that were doing this work and highlighted how important it was, we must lift this brother up for even attempting to carry on the legacy of his father and his mother. And for that, we remain eternally grateful. It's with great gratitude to even be honored among such distinguished, honorable freedom fighters. I refer to each and every one of you as that energy of Heru Kuhuti, that warrior spirit that is spiritual, yes, physical when necessary, but principled, ordered, disciplined, militaristic when we need to be. We can do diplomacy. We do diplomacy African style, yeah? So when yeah. you're hearing that term, Heru Kuhuti, when you're hearing that term, the restorative energy of my eye, you're restoring truth, justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness and harmony. That's what Marcus Garvey Jr. And I humble Dr. Marcus yes. Garvey Jr. <laughs> need to make sure we recognize he brought so many different elements to what he gave to the earth we have to give thanks for mama jean garvey his beloved wife now widow for letting him share himself in that form to do this work at all the different sacrifices we know the kind of conversations they must have had we won't leave that day right mm -hmm. we also know the sacrifices his children have made and will continue to make just based on his powerful ancestral African legacy. We refer to him as a Makeru. A Makeru is an ancestral triumphant one as he's rising forward because we know he's rising forward with our most respective, progressive, positive, blessed revolutionary ancestors. And so with that, I give thanks for just being able to share that small tapestry amongst this wonderful, wonderful quilt that we have laid to rest in honor of the powerful Makeru, Dr. Marcus Garvey Jr. Do I own to? Yes. Yes. Yes, my sister. Sante Simon. I, I know I I, Sanjay I know Sanjay. my I know my dear sister Dr. Chinzara was gonna bring it. You see, we, we understand that we are still learning, but we are carrying out what our ancestors did and we are working to do what they wish us to complete. So without any further ado, I'll turn it back over to the PG. He's back. <laughs> yes, uh, Sante Sana, Brother Singor, and my sister queen, my sister queen, please. Peace, peace, blessings. Truly a powerful message. As are everything that has been said tonight in tribute to the life and legacy of the Honorable Mark, Dr. Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. I, I meant to say that earlier. But I guess, you know, when you worked with him, he'd never used those accolades. Mm -hmm. he, he, he didn't use them. You know, he, he never said, I'm, I'm Dr. Marcus Garvey. He just didn't. It, it's like he was... Dr. Marcus Garvey Jr., even if someone to call him Marcus Garvey III, whatever you want to call him, this is what he called himself. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I honor is how he described himself. And the sister in his outreach to even the organization that he started in Jamaica, because he started working there. 
And I think the lesson he learned, as he said once from his father, is that Jamaica was a starting point, but to move the race forward, you had to be where the majority of people were that could move forward. Because in his father's time, the Negro in America, in his assessment, had gained something coming from slavery so new, so young, so fresh. When Marcus Garvey Jr. arrived, that same Negro had already come from slavery and thought he knew something. So we had to change that metaphor. We had to change it, which is where I think propaganda is going to be key and crucial as we move forward, because it's what tool we need to use to get the message to all of us across the realm. Um, I'm, I don't P have- P go ahead. PG, yeah. go. Sam, uh, can, we, can we hear from Sam? It, it said, is we at, that's where we are on the agenda? Yes. Because we're not- Yeah, at, a reasoning, reasoning right, right after Sam. If okay. I mean, let him share. That's where we are. Okay, go. Sam, where are you? Where's the youth at? That's, we, that's what I'm talking about. I want him to I know. share. Where, where's the youth? Where is he? Did he get right, back from the store? Right he got back from the store? Because oh, he had to go through ago. the store. <laughs> long time ago. I, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's that's what we get a chance to do because you do you. Go ahead, my brother. Let's hear uh, from I, you. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I didn't know um, Marcus <clears throat> Garvey Jr. personally, but I, you know, uh, what they say is when you when you transition, you don't really transition because you lay something down during your life that speaks to what you did long after you gone, long after you're gone, and just really hearing the elders speak tonight and then working with some of the elders here on this line. Um, I could say for myself that even though I didn't meet the man physically, that I did know uh, Marcus Garvey Jr. And it's just an honor, you know, being a Garveyite, working in Pan-Africanism, working uh, in the interest of, you know, uh, our people and self-determination because self-determination is the ultimate goal. And in speaking, you know, I'm, I'm a youth, but... Um, I just entered my thirties, you know, and, uh, and and I know that there are a lot of youth younger than me in their twenties, teens, who need this information, who need to see uh, Pan Africanism actualized, who need to understand what it is exactly that we're doing and why it is that we're doing it. So that's my that's been my life's mission, you know, honestly, just working in journalism and working in education and just using education as a vehicle to help youth understand that. It's not, it's not necessarily about what you do. It's about why you're doing it and to what ends. And when we're talking about industry and commerce, when we're talking about uh, organizing, when we're talking about nation building, we are talking about all things that, you know, Marcus Garvey uh, laid out when he founded the UNIA. And we're talking about principles that have been actualized, you know, long before he died. And and well, you know, and, and, and especially during Marcus Garvey Jr.'s, you know, tenure as president general, you know, so it's once again, it's just been an honor. And, you know, um, and speaking about the past, I just want to say that uh, once again, the youth need this information. So I'm going to do my part in making sure that in whatever I do as an educator, that whether it's giving them literature to read, giving them opportunities to write about what they read, that they understand what's going on and that they're, and that they are immersed in these principles and they know what's going on because right now we are in a war, you know, and the war is a war of ideas and a war of perspectives, you know, um, given what's happened to our <coughs> leaders from the 60s on, a lot of young people who are on the front lines and young people who are uh, interested in issues of police brutality, so forth and so on, they are not really educated about the nationalist viewpoint. They still look at it as Democrats versus Republicans. And that is a tragedy, you know, and that doesn't speak necessarily to what, you know, we done or haven't done, but it speaks to the financial backing and the resources that the powers that be have to nullify the voices that are more nationalistic and more independent. So that's been my life's goal to serve as an example of what you can be when you espouse Pan-African nationalism, when you espouse principles that speak to self-determination, industry and commerce, and everything that has to do with connecting with the African continent 
and espousing ourselves as Africans first, not citizens or colonizing governments, but Africans first. I say. I say, I say, I say, and I know. Although you say you claim thirty, we still want to call that youth, because uh, you're closer to twenty than we are at this. Oh, point. I'll tell you. Let, let, yeah, let me let, let me say something. Let me say, please permit me. Yes, permit me to say something about uh, you. Oh, by the way, sister, um, I'm so glad to see you again. Likewise, yeah, elder. It's an honor. It's an honor, it's an honor, elder. honor, honor on my part. Let me say something about youth. Uh, first place, I'm so proud of Brother Sam for what he's doing in the Pan-African Federalist Movement, what he's doing in Washington. And I see myself in Sam, and, and let's look at it historically also. When we, <laughs> when we brought Pan-Africanism and, and nationalism to core, I was in my early 20s, and in the, in the high leadership, Solomon Goodrich was older than, than Ennis. None yes. of us was over 40. So That's right. None of them was over 40. Marcus Garvey, when he held that historical convention in, in, in August of 1920, 20. he was 32. Yep. His birthday, he became 33, the same month. Yep. So, so that, I mean, so, so youth, I mean, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, they all passed before they were, they were, they, they were uh, 40. Lum Lumumba was like 35. Mm -hmm. yep. So, uh, so, so, That's so right. is, is youth move the movement? So it's it's not um, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Brother Sam is 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 a, is, a, is a part of the leadership of the group and part of the future of the group. And historically, we we elders. One day, Sam, you're going to be an elder. But but, but we elders need, <laughs> need to understand. I'm looking forward to it. I want. <laughs> <laughs> we need, we need, we need to understand. It, it, the historically, it's the youth that move us forward. That's right. And we're not going to get anywhere without that. So I, I just want to. Uh, every, whenever Sam talks to me, talk about being youth. I'm thinking about myself. I'm thinking about where I, I'm thinking about Ennis. I'm thinking about Garvey. I'm thinking about King. They were all so called youth. And, and I'm going to say you could think about Singor or Mary Bota yeah. the yeah. same way. Yes. You yeah. moving the movement. Movement, yeah. You move my, the movement. And that's it, how we got here. That's exactly. how we got here. My generation, said, yeah. my generation was the one that said, don't trust anybody over 30. <laughs> I know we laugh at it now, but that's yeah, what we said then. Yeah, but we said that when we was 20. <laughs> right. Exactly. 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 Anyway, You're right. Yeah. Keep, we didn't know any better, but I mean, but I'm just saying that's hey, that's you. That's <laughs> right. But uh, keeping in 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 focus, um is, are there are other parent body members here that wanted to say anything? And if so, please let me give you opportunity to speak. Yes, Ingo. I yeah, to well, you got you got uh, you, you also got Tashaka. There's a yes. couple of people here, James. If they want to share, James. But, and but I, is I, our I, president I, I, too, I, right? He's a president of a I, division. Yeah, of Ghana, Ghana, Ghana's right. division. So, so that was so, my but, next. Look, group. I, I gotta Go say this. I yep. gotta I gotta say this though, Baba Kelly. You hit the nail on the head, PG. I'm Seta. I was at the march on Washington when I was in my teens, and when my twenties, that's when I found the UNIA. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Like Baba Kili always says, we still look. We ain't done nothing yet. No. Nope. Hey. So don't look at our age as though we, you know, uh, I'm still a youth advocate. I had to say that I'm a youth advocate, and you're gonna see us in our grandchildren. And Dr. Chenzera, Baba Kili, they grandparents. I'm grandparent. Mm -hmm. So for real, for real though. I still, we still got youth with us. I just want to stress oh, yeah. that, you know, bro, I tell Sam that all the time. Me and Sam <laughs> talk all the time. We still got our youth. You know what oh. I mean? Because and Baba Kelly, Baba Kelly, I got to say this. You know, Baba Kelly told us at, at one of our centennial celebrations, <laughs> he said, I'm going to see y'all at the next centennial. And everybody laughed and said, ha, ha, ha. But guess what? We didn't have two other centennials since right. then. So what Baba right. Kelly is saying is, you, you don't, you don't, you don't put, you don't start talking about what ain't going to happen when you're going forward. You know, you live life to life. Why are we here? We ain't look. Charles L. James told me if it was left to death, death. It, death would yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. Charles death. L. James said, Kill if it was death. left to me, death, death would, die. would die. And I and I and, and I and, and, and I came to understand that yes. as being very thorough. What he was saying, he was saying he know what time it is, but to him, he gonna give it all as long as he's on this side, and he gonna give it up when he's living side. life on the so, other side. Uh -huh. And that when Marcus Garvey Jr., what Marcus Garvey tell us, look for me in the whirlwind. 
Ooh. Yeah. And and count on me. I'm going count to count on me count to on. be a. I'm gonna hold. Want you to hold go, that point, go, brother Singo. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, PG. I want to come back to that. Hold that point. Um, okay. There are presidents right. like Tishaka Cummins, and there's brother Hauser, who's parent body officer, who haven't given an opportunity to speak. And I noticed some other names, uh, and I'm not necessarily familiar. There's a Mo. Is that Sam? And then there's uh, Eugene. No, that's Charles, that's not Sam. Eugenia Charles, Keith Eastern. Uh, so if you know them, know them. You know, we, at some point you can potentially. Oh, Mo, Mo is Baba Mosi. Yeah, no, no, not that. Okay, yeah, Baba now I can Mosey. see. Him. Now I can see him. All right, so Tashaka. What's up, Mo? Let me go with Tashaka. <laughs> then I get Baba Mosi in, and go. Tashaka, you have comment? Well, I didn't know uh, Dr. Marcus Garvey Jr. personally. All I can do is learn from those who did, and which I really appreciate the candor and the input that people are putting in for those of us who did not know the brother personally, although we can follow his teachings and his work. And I suggest that people like myself, uh, that, that we do just that, that we do all we can to learn uh, the brother's contribution for uh, uh, redemption. That's pretty much all I have to say. Thank, thank you, sir. I didn't want you to feel like this is open a time for openness and although you may not have known him you stayed at liberty hall in philadelphia so you touched his work you touched his work you said once to me that i made sure you had a place to stay marcus gooey made sure that we had a place to stay that's right uh brother Mo baba mosey where are you greetings Greetings. Greetings, uh, Greetings I, I, Mo. I, I, I have to remember that. Mo is Mosey. Okay. Uh, I thank you, President General Achille, and uh, the rest of uh, those who are on the panel of uh, the parent body who are here. Um, you know, like uh, many who have said it before, um, I did not personally know Marcus Garvey Jr. Although when I joined the UNIA, he was president general at the time. It was not that I did not want to know him or I, did, I just never had the opportunity to meet him because I was too busy trying to run a, a, a business that was, uh, that, uh, was, was owned. I, you know, as the owner of a business, I had, did not have the time to uh, leave that business to uh, do many things that, um, you know, would, would you know, uh, you know, I have me meet like uh, conventions and stuff like that. I missed a lot of those during his time uh, because, you know, the, the business required that I be there 24 seven, so to speak. Uh, but uh, in any event, I knew his work. I, and uh, I, I heard of, you know, I heard of him. I heard of the things he demanded. And uh, I can tell you from what I heard that I, 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 I do know him in that sense, because uh, he did impress me as one who uh, you know, took no prisoners when it came to uh, dealing with the UNIA ACL. So, <laughs> and, and then I saw some of, of uh, his speeches, um, uh, his videos, and um, you know, I, I, I can tell you, I, if, if I had personally known him, I probably would have had some things rubbing off on me, but um, I had uh, St. Gore, I had you, you know, I, I had other people who, uh, you know, things are rubbing off on me, you know, like, and you guys who are the senior people at the UNIA, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm pleased to be working with you. Uh, I'm grateful that you uh, accept me as one of, of, of you in the UNIA and the IRC 2020. And, and uh, I do hope that some of the things that Marcus Garvey Jr. did, you know, in the sense of trying to walk or walking in the shoes of his father and trying to do the work of his parents and, uh, and uh, completing some of the things that his father uh, were not, was not able to do, and that is traveling in certain places. Um, I am grateful. I'm grateful that I, I am having this experience. I'm grateful for the work he had done. 
I'm grateful that he was in his 12 years as president general, he was able to shape the UNIA in a way that will move us forward. Although we've had our issues, um, we are still moving forward. And, uh, and I make a promise to walk in his footsteps so that uh, we can get to that point where we can all say with emphasis that as Garveyites, we have done the work through one God, one aim, one destiny. I thank you. I say, my brother, I say, well said, much appreciated. Because although you may not have physically known him, you know him. I know. <laughs> you know him. I felt him. <laughs> yeah, you know him. Brother Hauser? Is he still there? Okay. So I'll give anyone, is brother James, brother James Wilson, would you care to make some remarks? Ah, come on, James. You got to unmute yourself. There you go. Greetings. Greetings. Yes, to all of you giants there. Yes. Uh, it's so wonderful to just humbly be a part of this great celebration for the son of Marcus Mosiah Garvey mm -hmm. to feel his spirit in all of us to gather the history that we must always take to our youth. I, I woke up this morning and read the paper about a, a gentleman who at 15 in Philadelphia, drank some wine with some brothers and went out and they, 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 they had to, ex they expressed themselves in through drinking with a, with some anger, misplaced anger. And this brother at that time at a fifth, at 15 years old, was incarcerated for 68 years, Brother Lowton, mm -hmm. in uh, Philadelphia prisons. And these kinds of things, this, this, these beastly things that have been done and are still being done and have never ever stop being done to our people such that we don't really get to know our greatness is unspeakable. Uh, just, you know, I wasn't a member of the UNIA, uh, 20 years ago, all of you were. Yeah. I um, was always trying to, through rites of passage and different things to uplift our youth and myself, but it wasn't until Senghor and <laughs> Farouk uh, said, damn, you could, you can cook. We're having these. We're having these functions where we're where we're bringing in the youth and bringing in their parents. And you know, we have to have some food. James, can you help us out? I said, sure. <laughs> oh. oh, boy, it never. And from then, from then on, it was it it was on it was on because the the beauty and passion and the giving uh, that that we've always been a part of 
for 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 our people and for for all people because we are all people you know and I, I i don't i don't i don't i don't know what what to say i i'm gonna stop these run on sentences <laughs> and, and just be grateful at, that, that, I, that i'm here with you today i i love all of you i'm happy pleased honored to be a part of this great organization of Africans because we are. And that's all I say. I but let me say, Brother James, as Marcus Garvey Sr., our founder said, every Negro is a part of the UNIA. It's just two types. It's one yeah. who pay dues and <laughs> one who don't. So in the beginning, you weren't paying dues. And then you mentioned Farouk and Senghor and cooking. I think you got your dues caught up. See, so that commitment, <laughs> that commitment is always to the work. You see, when the honoring and the tribute to Marcus Garvey Jr. tonight is to the work because he is still alive. Yes. It's, it's life to life. Yes. The body may go, but it's life to life. Yeah, it wasn't the body that he was. It's not the body of Marcus Garvey that we salute. It is the essence. It is the spirit. It True. is that which continues to move and accomplish things. It's like when they say, "Look," when Garvey said, "Look for me in the whirlwind," Garvey was saying, "You can't see the wind, mm -hmm. but you feel it." That's right. So you know it's there. Yes. You might not see me, but mm -hmm. know I'm with you. Ten million Africans strong truth so even the relationship to the 15 year old who spent his entire life at that point that was because he didn't feel the wind yeah because if he felt the wind it would have changed the actions and what we have to get our youth to do is to feel the wind and that's our job Mm -hmm. Because our job is when we say, look into the whirlwind, I have listened to people try to give a definition. Well, when he said, look for me in the whirlwind, it meant, you know, he going to be metaphysically. No, it's oh. not metaphysical. <laughs> it, it's not. It, oh, look for me in the whirlwind. It means yes. you're going to find me. No, you're not going to do that because he with you right now. Air, airway. Everywhere. Everybody who has a parent that has transitioned, remember every spanking you ever got. That's right. <laughs> because they still with you. And even if you do wrong, you know they telling you, see, I done told you. Right. Right. Well, Garvey says when when you see it going wrong, Garvey himself looked at the UNIA mm -hmm. and saw it going opposite of the direction that he planned for it yeah and he reorganized mm -hmm. look at the constitution 1929 of the world yes so he saw when others went wrong we see others going wrong we call it rehabilitating after the actions of thomas w harvey so it's been done once but never, even so steward in the whirlwind working to make it right yes absolutely. Charles says james Every last one of them. PG. Yes, sir. You know, PG, PG, you know, you, you brought something up that's very uh -oh. important. Uh, today, today, today is Dr. Tony Martin's Earth Day. That's right. Today. And what I want to say is I know you were there <laughs> when him and Marcus Garvey Jr. were the pallbearers for Thomas, Thomas w. w. Harvey's Harvey. casket. Yeah. When they when they had afros, they had bushes. <laughs> they didn't have gray hair. I, I I got the picture. I got the picture. Sam, Sam, we talking Marcus Garvey Jr. and Tony Martin had froes, man, and bushes. I mean, you know, no gray. Yeah, I, and they I were see carrying. Back. No, that was no. I'm serious. That, that's for real. Bob Achille can can speak to it. But but what I'm saying, me and Bob Achille. When I was first elected, I didn't have no gray. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, you know, and I had no idea I was gonna end up serving as president general. 
Baba Killy knows what I'm talking about because the year I ran in 2008, me and Baba Killy had a little meeting and we looked each other in the eye as brothers and he said, are you ready? I said, yeah, are you ready? And that's how we've been rolling. But we were already rolling like that before we yeah. got positions. Yeah, you that's see? true. Because if it were not for Baba Killy and the Nkrumahs, See, I was a revolutionary, Sam. That I was ready for the war, Jack. I was ready to get armed. I was ready to put my fatigues on in the 20s, man. Exactly, and I yes. said, I found the Garvey movement. I, I found the Garvey movement. Let's uh, roll. And, Bob, and Baba Gilly and them, Baba Gilly and them pulled me aside and say, bro, like you that. know, it's not quite like that. And when we went inside, the <laughs> elders told me, oh, we so glad to see you. Sit there and listen. And you know, I'm telling you, you, we learned. We were Cubs. We were Cubs at that time, just like Garvey Jr. and Tony Martin were Cubs when they were carrying Thomas W. Harvey, who worked with Garvey, mm -hmm. casket. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is we are Lions now. Yes, we're Lions. We, we ain't got no, we don't have time. Sam, enjoy where you are. We don't got time. Me and Baba Kili, we don't got time to play that Cub business. We Lions. Because we are striving <laughs> to complete our missions. Yeah, our task. And a cub ain't going to get there. See, we're going to roar like lions. And when we say Black Star Lion nine time, we're serious about it. And you know what I'm saying to you is, brother, we know the cubs are everywhere. But you too are very close to being lions because yeah. it's all spirit. James Wilson. I got to say this, Baba Killy, because I, I grew up with James Wilson. James Wilson was a, little, was, a little, was a little shy about saying that he was doing the works yep. before he was a member paying dues, doing the works in the community. And James ain't have a choice running with me and Zama and Baba Farouk not to be a dues paying member because we knew he was doing the work. But there are a lot of brothers and sisters out there like that, that we are going after, right? For PG, I'm gonna let you speak to that. Right. Because, because uh, Dr. Chenzera made it profoundly clear, they're brothers and sisters that don't even speak English, that know, like we know, what happened when they were growing up, know that they disconnected, know they wanna be connected. So anyway, Baba Kili, cause you know how we are. Yeah, we can <laughs> be a long I also way. want us to talk about, Tony Martin, Tony Martin. And, and we're going to get to that, but there is, I believe, Eugenia Charles from Haiti, and I'd like to give her opportunity to speak. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Eugenia, I'll assume you're muted. She's uh, here. I know she's here. And I'm trying to give her a chance to find that I, unmute I, button. And if not, my sister, you can unmute and let me know when you're there. And I will revert back to you. Um, sister Margo? Did Mar Margo's here too. Yeah, Margo, do you have some comments you want to make? And I Hi, think sister, this is, a, this is sister Brenda. Brenda. Okay, Sister Brenda. Yeah, what, uh, Margo told me I was, I was called up earlier. Yes, you were. But Am I ahead. live now? Well, we can oh, only see yes. the song. Wonderful. Yes, you're live. Thank you, PG. Well, I can uh, go back, listen to all the perspectives that everyone have of Garvey. It's just wonderful, going back through history. Now, I remember uh, Mr. Garvey's visit to Chicago to our convention in 94. And I'll always remember it because I was so honored and we were just all, just all out ourselves because he was coming. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that uh, what I think Garvey uh, did for us just in general was to continue the line of his father's work. And Mary has mentioned all the things that he's done and also uh, Sangoa, and I can only speak of a few things. I was around him um, several times when he was here uh, at our convention, but not like you people. I didn't get a chance to sit and really discuss things with him. He was at our uh, Phi Beta Sigma house 
uh, meeting place, and we all talked in general then, mass meeting and all those things that we had then. But um, our first lady, which is uh, uh, Mrs. Charles L. James, Estelle James, she's known as, she decided in 91 that she would return to New Orleans, which is her home. Uh, she was a great loss to us, and we really didn't know what to do. At least I didn't. I said, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And uh, Division uh, 429 at that time, which Sister Mary and I were members, we said we're going to make it, and we're going to show Miss James that we can make it, and we did. Now, I had heard a lot of things about Garvey that uh, – he didn't he didn't look like he's very friendly <laughs> and uh, and uh he might not uh speak to you in that way now I, i'm not going to say where i heard these things but i heard them in different places and i found myself uh checking mr garvey out when he first came here to chicago and he did have a stern exterior and a no-nonsense attitude and we knew that he was an extra, extra hard worker and a really good task giver, et cetera, et cetera. And I found that it was all true, that he was a hard worker and he expected the same from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Now, our convention was in August of 94. We had uh, the convention at the South Shore Country Club, which was a very exclusive place. And we sold out our uh, seating capacity, which was 300 seats. That's right. Dr. Tony Martin was scheduled to be our keynote speaker. But through many, many situations, he was unable to uh, make it to the convention. So our keynote speaker was indeed the man of the hour himself, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr., who delivered a wonderful speech and received a standing ovation that evening. We were told uh, years before that Mr. Garvey was a great dancer, and I think Sister Mary mentioned <laughs> dancing with him that evening. And, uh, of course, people sort of gathered around when he got on the floor and started dancing. And uh, he showed us a few of his fancy steps. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we laughed, and we had so much fun that evening. It was a wonderful evening and occasion, and everyone enjoyed themselves. Mm -hmm. I will always remember the Honorable Marcus Garvey, Jr. <laughs> at our 94 convention in Chicago. And he will be in our, I guess I, I should say, burned in our memories, all of us. Absolutely. But particularly that time, because it was my first time really getting an opportunity to be near him and speaking to him and all of those, those wonderful things. He's now in our ancestral realm. And we can call on him as we are to direct us, to guide us in the work that we must do and the work that must be done. Right. We honor his wife, Jean Garvey, and we keep the Garvey family and relatives in our prayers. Right. One God, one, aim. one, aim, one, one destiny. destiny. Right. And I just want to mention my position of PG. Go right ahead. At that particular um time, well, I became Secretary, first Assistant Secretary General in 08, um, doing uh, Senghor Baye's uh, administration. And I, I was there until 17, and I became first Assistant Secretary General in the UNIARC 2020 in January of 2020 to present. I say. Thank you. Yes, I say. Mm -hmm. All right, Margo. Uh, greetings, everyone. Greetings. Um, I greetings. never, 
I never had the honor to work or meet um, Dr. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey Jr. Um, but I have had the opportunity and the honor to work with all of you who worked with him and studied under him and learned from him. And I am learning from all of you all about his works and his deeds. And I am learning more tonight, listening to all of you speak, speak about him. Okay. Thank it's you. the spirit that moves us. Asante, my sister. Yes. So I'm going to again go back and ask Eugenia Charles. If you would, unmute yourself. Okay. I also have a Keith Easton. And maybe that's yes. one of um, uh, Good David. night. I, I may, am I on live? You are on live. Can you put a picture up so we can see you? My gosh. Let me see. One <laughs> second. You saw me before. <laughs> Yes, sir, my brother, we see you now. All right. Okay. Yes, um, President General and members of the panel, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be on this Zoom um, with everyone. I was invited by um, Baba Mosey, um, who I've known for some time, and also um, Brother Patrick Battersfield from the um, Evergreen Productions. I do not know Marcus Garvey Jr. I know, and so this is education for me. Um, I know of Marcus Garvey um, Sr., of, um, of which I've purchased numerous books from Baba Mosi. Um, that is part of his um, business or was part of his business. And I have attended many UNIA functions um, um, in, on 12th Street in Washington, DC. And um, I'm grateful in summation, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be educated by you guys um, along the line. And that is one of my purpose, especially since I started a museum and archives in Buxton in Guyana, South America. And we have proudly, um, you know, painted the front of the museum, represented the um, red, black, and green, right? And you know, that's, uh, um, that's a little situation in Guyana. And we also um, try to educate the youth on the work of Marcus Garvey, right? So um, this is all education for me, right? And um, which I will be passing on as I go along to the younger people and to members who visit the museum. Um, right. Ashe, Ashe, Asante, it's on to you. Glad to see your face and appreciate your presence. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, we're moving right along. I I noticed we don't have uh, Brother Shakara or Chief Fode with us this evening, although we did anticipate having them. So what I'd like to do is, Singor mentioned it. Oh, Keith Easton, the Keith just left. But Singor mentioned it earlier, and I would like us to take a moment to have a reflection on Dr. Tony Martin. Many of us on this call knew him. Since this is his day that we chose to honor the Honorable Marcus Garvey Jr., I think it's fitting and reasonable that we have some comments, brief brief comments, because I know we're going to do something uh, for Dr. Tony Martin. Single, I saw your finger, so you get to be first. Yeah, I don't want to, I want to, I want to combine Dr. Martin's legacy in with Dr. Uh, Garvey's. Garvey. Yes. Because in 1993, one year after Marcus Garvey was elected president general, we had one of the most spectacular programs that we've ever hosted here in Banneker City on the campus of Howard University, but it was UDC Auditorium. Yep. It was UDC Auditorium. And uh, I had the pleasure of being one of the coordinators of that. And it was, it was spectacular. And it was co-sponsored by Kiam Shaw, the UNIA Whitson Banneker Jackson Bay Division, and a brother here who was a giant in our community named Keyway Bay. And the reason I mention that is because Tony Martin, I, I just looked at Tony Martin's speech that he did that day, and every each one of them had a specific area. Dr. John Henry Clark, 
And you know, we know how powerful Dr. Clark is. Yeah. Marcus Garvey Jr., President General for one year in the UNIA in 1993, <laughs> along with Dr. Tony Martin, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing was there. It was a whole lot of people. But I mentioned her because she was honored and respected at that time as being a giant on the campus of Howard University, even after Howard University had kicked her out. But anyway, Dr. Tony Martin and Marcus Garvey Jr., they lit up the place. And I listened to Tony the other day, and we're gonna, we're gonna try to put all of that information up for people to see. But I always talk to Dr. Tony Martin in such a way where a little different than inside the, 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 the UNI, if you know what I'm saying, Baba Keely, I think you do. You bought Race First, probably one of the first people that bought Race First. But because Tony was so aware of so many different things going on around the world with Garveyites, I could consult him. And I used to consult him on issues that I had that weren't necessarily the same in line with Marcus Garvey Jr. You hear me? <laughs> so Tony Martin, Tony Martin was the type brother. I, I call him the cool ruler. We are going to post tributes that we did to Dr. Tony Martin on our YouTube page. But like Baba Kelly said, we're gonna really delve into the legacy that was huge of Dr. Tony Martin. But I saw Dr. Tony Martin and Marcus Garvey Jr. almost in the same kind of light because while Marcus Garvey Jr. politically was taking on the work to bring the UNIA into the 21st century, Marcus uh, Tony Martin, by President General Harvey and President General James, was the man when it came to the history of Marcus Garvey. So I stop on that point. All right. The Marcus Garvey Library was a lot of books, but every one of them is on my shelf. And, you know, Tony wrote about Amy Jocks Garvey. He wrote, a, I mean, no, he, no, I'm sorry. He, Amy, he lectured yeah. about Amy Jocks Garvey. No, 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 he lectured about Amy Jocks Garvey and wrote papers on Amy Jocks Garvey, but he wrote a book on you Amy Ashwood. Uh, Ashwood. Ashwood. Yeah. And, and, and he also explained to me how he was incubated by elders in Detroit, which inspired him to write Race First. Race First actually was, was published in 1976, but it was his college paper that he did, used in college. And I'm telling you, if you ain't read Race First, you, you, you don't really know the UNIA because what Tony did was not only deal with the personalities, he dealt with the environment, the oppression, the oppression that came to the UNIA, the internal conflicts, but he always kept you wanting more. And last but certainly not least, Bob Achille, he convinced everybody through the leadership of Baba Farouk and Redmond Battle that we are a government. And, and a lot of people say, well, how are y'all a government? They like to compare us to Yorugu governments. That's not the kind of government we are, but we are a government. And Dr. Tony Martin proved that right here in Washington, D.C. at Kima Charter School. But when he was scheduled to come, the parts of the whirlwind hit us, Bob Achille. If you, I don't know if you remember, we got a snowstorm oh, yeah. like never before. Yeah. I, it shut down everything. We had to cancel the program. Yeah. And so people were chopping at the bits of when y'all gonna bring Tony, when you gonna bring Tony. But we Never still is. did the program. Yeah. But 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 here's the killer. Wow, right after we finished the program of him convincing us, and y'all will get to see that lecture that was done under the Redmond Battle Administration on video. We got a call from Belize telling us about acres of land that belonged to us. So we knew right then that the whirlwind was real. And, and when Dr. Tony Martin heard about it, he says, like I said, he was the cool ruler. He says, that's why we have to learn about our story because it's a lot of stuff around the world that we have to go visit. We had no idea that was gonna happen like that, Baba Kili. You know, first we got the whirlwind of the snowstorm and several months after that, we were able to do it. 
And less than two, three weeks after that, we got the call from Belize about land right, that, that belongs to us. To, Tony Mart, go, go ahead. I'm, no, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, you I interrupted you. Please. No, continue. that's all right. I was just saying that 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 was that was a sign to us. Me and Baba Farouk all night long were talking about that how powerful our ancestors are still working. Because when we, when Tony Martin lectured at Kima Charter School, owned by the Ansar Set at that time, he made it clear that we were officially carrying on the works of our ancestors who worked with Garvey. And then we saw a manifestation. And Mr. Battle always say, claim it, it will show up. He used to always tell us that. But anyway, I just wanted to say that about Tony Martin and Marcus Garvey Jr. Because both of them are still life to life. Absolutely. So imagine what they're doing now. Go I'm ahead, gonna, Baba Keely. I'm, I'm going to come. I'm gonna gonna come. You did, but that's okay. We knew that was going to happen. That ain't no problem. <laughs> that's what this is for. It's for us to say those things. And we, we wanted to bring Tony Martin up on, his, on the day that he came into this earth on this earth is because we had to recognize that. I say, why are you there? I don't know if you want to say anything because you worked closely with him when we did the very first book sale. Are you there? Did I lose say why? I did tell her to mute herself. Okay. Nope, she's still there. Say why unmute yourself if you have something to say. Okay. Can't fight that feeling. Sister Mary? Yes. You have anything you want to say about? It? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I remember when the book was promoted in Chicago at the Dusaba Museum, and I told Tony, I said, "This book better be good because this is my last twenty dollars." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "This is my last twenty dollars." Okay. Since that time, I've had to purchase two or three more because different things have happened. And, you know, my 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 book has been stolen and. I've had to replace it, but I did get the version uh, Ray first uh, published by the Majority Press. And so I was also there at convention, I believe it was in 77, when Mr. Um, James made Mr. Uh, Tony Martin our official historian because of the, the work of that book. That was in Philadelphia, wasn't it? Historian of the UNIAACL. But that was in Philadelphia, correct? That was in Philadelphia at the okay. hall. Yeah. Yep, I thought so. That's, okay. that's really all I wanted to say. I just wanted to share that last twenty dollars that I gave Tony Martin. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be good. Twenty dollars okay. well spent. Sister, say why I heard you chuckle. So did you have okay. anything you want to say in reference to Tony Martin? Oh, okay. Yes, I am here. And um I want to say that um uh, I joined the UNIA in the right after the convention in 1977. And I believe Race First had just been published. Sister Jean Slappy, Mr. Thomas W. Harvey's daughter, asked me to give the, the uh, book party for Race First. And I did not realize how huge it was at that time. You know, now, you know, fast forward these number of years, I've read it two or three times. And I think that uh, it's such, um, it's such a, a, a lot of information. It's a powerful book on the UNIA. It makes you proud to, to be a part of the UNIA and want to serve and want to, and want to recreate its greatness you know, from uh, 1920 forward. But I said, I realized what, uh, at later how powerful it was. And Tony Martin was an extensive researcher and whatnot because I do remember um, a few years later, he was talking about writing a book about Amy Ashwood Garvey. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like it took a long time for the book to finally come out. But uh, one reason why that happened, because he said when he started writing about Amy Ashwood, people came out the woodwork, you know, that knew her, you know, that knew her and loved Amy Ashwood. And so, you know, when the book finally came out, you know, he, like I said, there's a lot of extensive work. And went into the book. I'm sure all of his books were extensive work, but uh, like I said, he was a very powerful, very humble brother yet. And uh, it was uh, great to have known him and to have worked with him. Ashe. Uh, Dr. Chinzaro, you're with us. You care to share? I see that smile. I'm smiling because 
he was a thorough scholar. Like he was so thorough <laughs> that it gave a lot of motivation to young scholars. I consider myself in that realm, you know, following his work and making sure that we were not just bibliophiles, but we could actually provide the research, give data, have more than seven resources to justify anything that you publish. And he was publishing and he published with an exceptional clarity where he integrated higher order thinking skills and was still revolutionary. He really? integrated all kinds of cognitive technologies in his research and work, and he was still able to talk to the common person. And phenomenal, phenomenal, exceptional scholar. And it's an honor to even be able to honor him. You know, looking at his work, even in the academic sphere, his work on Caribbean history is stellar. Yes, and it's absolutely. used everywhere. So what he was able to provide as the historian of record for the UNIA ACL, that's a hard space to hold. Yes. And he was able to hold it with the highest form of character and expertise. And it's an honor. It's an honor. Awesome. Yes. Plus when he spoke, it was like <laughs> you, you had to, he would say, do you have any questions? And you would just you try to find one. <laughs> and you didn't want to comment because if you comment that he was going to question you, that was the other thing. He was a, a yeah. very powerful educator. Yes. So his, his approach was very, very, very engaging. So it's an yeah. honor to be able to recognize him on his on the anniversary of, you know, of, his, of his birth. Yeah. I, I felt that ask the question and then get the question based on your question. Yeah, right. I've been there. Yeah. Right, right. And, and you better know what you're speaking about. So, Because if know. you didn't know, you got two lessons. That's One, true. next time, don't ask that question until you do some studying. And now let me help you learn. Yeah, I know. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there a couple of times. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Brother Sam, you, you're right. Brother Sam, any comments from you? I wanted to show some books. You already got these, but you know, been doing my reading as well. All thanks and praises to Tony Martin. Even though right, I didn't right. know him, he had some works that lasted well beyond him. So just really grateful to have known about him and to have read his works. That's right. And the works continue. Sante Sana. Wanted to make sure I got, you know, that uh youthful voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brother, I, I went, I, you have I something. Yeah, I remember Tony. I um, did you have you, the red one? You yeah, when, first you the went, red I went one? back to my library. I, I couldn't. Uh -huh. It's about five, ten, five books I got about them, but but this this was the first one. Yeah, that's the first one right here. Right I first. know. Mm -hmm. And then um, apparently I, I asked. It was some event. It says November twenty second, nineteen seventy seven, and I asked him. He get this is his writing. He gave me his uh, address and phone number and everything. So I just stuck that in the book, but then again, so that's that's the very first book, and that's his most famous book, Race First, of course. And this was a, uh, oh boy, I was living in Harlem then, so I had to be back sometime. And of course, there's um, <clears throat> message, message to the, to the people, uh, the at school of African philosophy, and, and then there's the the poems. Yeah, and then there's a book that that, that uh, Sam just showed. Uh, African fundamentalism. fundamentalism. And then there's the Pan-African connection. Yep. Yep. So I just went back and just pulled it all down. But I remember Tony on several different occasions. Um, he's a very strong speaker, tall, thin, and precise. Yes. Yep. Thorough. Right. Very yeah. good. And as I look at, our, as we put the agenda, there's a couple of things that I can wrap together to kind of close us out. Uh, instead of doing like a reasoning session, because I've had you for two and a half hours so far. And I know that there's comments to be made, but I didn't want us not to recognize Tony Martin. And I will share uh, just on Tony Martin, but then I'll wrap it up in, in our clo my closing remarks as well as with vision. But when they put the first race book out, Thomas W. Harvey was doing negotiations to get the price of the book 
for the sale of the book at Division 121. That's what I mentioned to Sewa. Myself and Asun Nkuma, whom I will mention a little later on, went for that negotiation. I was his first, his first vice president. See, in the UNIA, you don't have, the president of the division has a first mm -hmm. vice president, a second vice president, a third vice president. I, I know you may say, well, that's a lot of vice presidents. Well, they just divvied the duties up of a vice president so that you could have some hierarchy and some way to travel. Before I was first vice president, uh, single, you mentioned him, Brother Maddox was first vice president when I joined under Thomas W. Harvey. So I got to know that president general as well as work with him on a number of levels. But at some point, I think we need to do a round table where we honor all of those men and women that have contributed to where we are today. And you notice, and let me correct myself, honor those women and men, because I also got lessons from Sister Isaac, who was a student of Marcus Messiah Garvey and a graduate of the first class. So I didn't just get educated, or as we would probably say to young folks, get pushed around and beat up because I thought I knew something by just brothers, because the sisters was a little tougher than the brothers. And I think that was kind of normal. And so the sister would do that. And Sister Isaac looked one day and said, even though she was blind, when I say she looked, you couldn't have, you couldn't have told me that she was blind, even though I knew it. And she said, young brother, I like the way you talk. You in the right place. I said, mm, okay. And she said, you ain't bad to look at. Now, I don't know how that got around when she was blind. I didn't know what that meant. But I did learn later on. So just some interesting aspects. So in honoring Tony Martin, when we had that book sale, I was, you're right, I was one of the first to purchase the book that was in red because it was not only inferential, it was necessary for us to understand. And again, I will make some reference to that as we do visionary statements, but I'm going to do a quick round. Does anyone have anything you want to say? Anyone, did you have something you want to say now? Please. Yeah, I, I, I got when I got the book, it was blue. <laughs> blue. The first print, I don't remember a blue one. The, the, first, the, the first printing was red. Uh, 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 no, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you. Time See, I got around to getting a copy, it was blue. Yeah, I mean, okay. I got it. This is the first you know, printing, I think. It was. And, That's and, the and, first printing. No, yeah. I know. I got I got the blue book. Okay. The first hardback, the second hardback print. Second hardback. It was blue, mm -hmm. and oh, I got okay. I got a red softback. So I just okay. wanted to say that because I I used to joke. Sababu uh, used to joke with me. He said, "You got a blue race first? I said, "Yeah, my my book is blue." And everybody else that was in the UNIA before me, they had a red book. That's right. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Well, okay. But anyway, it's the same. Same book. information. Anyway, but wanted... yeah, no, you know, the point of that is like there was some there's always some things that we can use to bring a chuckle. So if without that, uh, if I can, I want to try to bring us to a close. Uh, unless Dr. Chen, you have something. I kind of see something in your eyes to say you want to say something. So I'm going to call on you. You got to unmute yourself. I just am elated that we're able to celebrate the ascension of the Honorable Dr. Marcus Garvey Jr. and celebrate the birth anniversary of Dr. Tony Martin in the same session. That is one God, one aim, one destiny. One destiny. Well, that is uh, just doc, doc, doc. Uh, 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 his history, though, y'all know, y'all know the day is February the twenty first, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. What happened Correct. with Brother Malcolm today? What happened with Brother Malcolm today? Ascension again. Ascension. That's right. Right. February twenty first is a powerful day. Right. It's a powerful yep. day. Yes, it is. I mean, yes, this, yes, this, it this, is. This, so, this marks the day where one of the top um, weirda and activists in the continent trying to save our lands in the continent also was taken out. You know, I mean, the February 21st is just February in general, but mm -hmm. this particular day, there's so many different observances on this day, you know, and it's it just, it's wonderful to be able to share with the family village nation government, you know, this type of sovereign voice 
this type of sovereign ancestral powerful voice together we absolutely should, yeah respect yeah respect. and and we appreciate that's what you you're want... seeing in my eyes that's, uh -huh. that's all you're that's, saying exactly. that's okay do you want to name the brother from the continent or that the leader from the continent see the water uh-huh right I, yeah, because you know you want to make sure we make this educational all around. Okay. We don't we don't want to hold it in. Some of us may know, some of us may not. Name I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. It, that's what makes this a pop. That's that's what makes this more beneficial because it is not only our tribute to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr., but to the words, works, and deeds, which means to those men and women, or those women and men who have done and given the same. We've mentioned the Honorable Estelle James tonight. You have to mention her. We mentioned Jean Slappy. There's a few others that some I'm going to try to weave them in, but I want us to look at the fact that we shouldn't wait for events of transition to do events of recognition. So that's something we have to do going forward. Single, I hope that's in agreement with me. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I don't, many of you didn't see the agenda and I don't know, I missed, I did text David on, we did our presidents. Listen, we embarked a few decades ago on a mission to raise our race to its proper place. We've had women, Amy Ashwood Garvey, Amy Jacquez Garvey, Queen Mother Moore, and many more, Harriet Tubman, to, to have given. We, we know that. There are names that are written in the archives of history that I may not be able to bring out. My Dr. Tinsworth, if you want to throw a sister's name out from the continent, because we have to recognize they were there too. They made sacrifices there too. And it's in, go ahead, go ahead. Give me a name. Kuti. Okay. The because mother of Fela Kuti. You have to, because this is how we groom. To, to, to none of us would be here without our mother. That's why we call it Mother Africa. That's why the the attributions and the contribution is to not just look at men. I think part of our challenge as a people has been we have looked at it from a male perspective and not a family perspective and not included the view of the sister. For where would we be without it? Where would we be if we did not have that contribution? I also want to mention, we mentioned Brother Farouk, but you need Brother Farouk to be mentioned. You need Estelle James to be mentioned. You need Jesus Slappy to be mentioned. But for me, there's a person that I want to mention that is as high as anyone named ever mentioned. That is Asim Nkrumah. That was my brother. I walked with him every day from the time I was 17. Fought him on the streets of Philadelphia. Ran with him in the revolution to change. Our commitment to the UNIA was phenomenal. He read everything. He made me read. And I know you may say, what do you mean he made you read? Because if he read it, he wouldn't talk about it unless you read it. So I would read it so we could talk about it. And then if I had an opinion about it, and you notice I didn't say I had an understanding of it, I could have an opinion, but then I had to learn that it wasn't my opinion that was important. What was important is my understanding and the actual application of what I had learned. I contribute that to Asim Nkrumah. I ran with him all the way until the moment when they were, his life was ending. I would walk in a room and I say Black Power and that was the only sign he recognized in his closing moments on this planet. He would do this. He didn't speak to nobody. I walk in the room and say Black Power. And his wife, Sister Karima, looked at me and said, why is it that he only speak to you? <laughs> I said, because we just hear this is black power. You know, the, the thrust when Singor mentioned Thomas W. Harvey and Tony Martin, and Marcus Garvey Jr. being pallbearers. I stood security for 24 hours 
over Thomas W. Harvey, as was dedicated and dictated by the UNIA manual. Our president general had to be guarded. And we did that. The Nkrumah brothers did that. So I wasn't able to be a pallbearer because of the works that was necessary to do. But I remember it was his decision and his daughter's application of that decision that took me to Jamaica for the first time for the swearing in of Charles L. James as his replacement and also the endearment of Marcus Garvey body in the ground in Jamaica, mm -hmm. standing up. Garvey does not lay down. He is in standing up. They said Garvey's leadership required that. I recall when they declared him the first for Jamaica, the hero. The Africa, yeah, the first we in the UNIA met with and worked with the Jamaican ambassador to endear that moment in Washington, D.C., where the dad blasted another snowstorm that we had to drive through to get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, see, Marcus Garvey Jr., in, in coming to Philadelphia and coming to the Shule where we worked, and I was not there when he arrived. I got a call and we didn't have cell phones. So I got a pager, got to make a call. And I would say, you got to get here to the Shule. I say, why, what's the problem? Because I was director of the Shule. They said, Marcus Garvey Jr. want to see you. I'm like, okay. And he came and we talked and we reasoned. And in that moment, I realized that not only was I talking with and walking with Marcus Garvey's son, but I was walking and talking with a giant that was the son of Marcus Garvey that brought his wherewithal to us. Didn't come when he was younger because he was learning and had to be prepared. It's amazing how time does it. You have to be prepared to get there. Garvey himself was prepared earlier. Marcus Garvey got into the movement in Jamaica, similar to his father's movement, transitioned his movement to America, went through educational pieces and realized that I cannot do my father's work without doing it within the framework that he left. And he came to the UNIA ACL of which we were a part. It is through that vision and through that commitment that you have to have a vision and a commitment moving forward. So let's recognize the things that we did not do with Marcus Garvey Jr. The things we weren't around to do with Marcus Garvey that we know have to be done now to further the aims and objectives of the UNIA, ACL, and now RC 2020. You see, if you lose sight of that vision and you lose sight of the work that has to be done or make the work about you, you've already failed. The work is not about any individual. I don't work to get rich. I work for the richness of my people. For when I see us move, I've moved. It's not the years that I've spent on this planet that's relevant because the body is what counts the years. It is the spirit and the essence of me that has to function regardless of what my body says because Garvey Jr. did that. And he functioned for as long as he could. And that's why we made sure it was secure for him to go off and us carry his legacy. And no one had to understand because no one could understand because people always look for your weaknesses. They always look to identify how to tear you down, how to criticize you. They don't look to see how do we elevate and work with you to move forward. Our vision is, has to be a hundred year vision. We have to develop concrete plans for one year, five years, 10 years, so that even if you don't finish it in this body, you finish it in the whirlwind. You finish it in the essence of the creator who brought you here. You finish it in a manner that is essential for us as a race. You see, 
Marcus Garvey Jr., Tony Martin, El Haas from Lee Gelsabaz. I had the opportunity to work with his wife. And I had the opportunity to work with his grandson. I read the autobiography of Malcolm X with Malcolm X's grandson. The family had not done it. He didn't know his grandfather. He attended the Marcus Garvey Shule of Positive Education. Mm. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is historical and at the same time monumental. It is also important that we look at the different things that have happened in this lifetime. I'm getting a little Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes, relevant too. Relevant to this commitment. He said, well, wasn't he anti-Malcolm? No, he just didn't understand Malcolm at one point, nor did Malcolm understand him at one point because their roads to where they were going started differently. But their meeting of the mind brought them together because of their commitment to our race. Whereas Martin was turned the other cheek and Malcolm was, no, you slap me, I slap you back. They had to come to a meeting of the minds which said, okay, I got to work with you because at some point it's going to be necessary to smack them back, which is why he was assassinated because he knew then that it was time to change the movement from talking about civil rights to actual rights where people grew and got better because they co-opted civil rights by dealing with it and making it women's rights. And there's no, no inflections on sisters because it wasn't talking about black women per se, was it? See, we, we, in looking forward, we have to understand the lessons of our history of the past. We have to realize that on this day and in this month in February, you know, I, I always get amazed when they had a conversation about Negro history. <laughs> Please bear with me a minute. Say Negro history. Well, see, and then they credit our, our brothers we're doing Negro History Week. Well, let, let's be honest. He didn't start Negro History Week. He started Negro History Day. It was one day in this month, February 12th, to honor, um, his name escapes me. That's what it was, one day. And then he's, they said, okay, we're gonna push it. And they push it to one week. And then the Negro really flex and we flex and we say, well, we're gonna claim the whole month. And white folks say, okay, get the Negroes the whole month. They say, what month is that? The shortest month in the damn year. You can go celebrate your history and all the other damn months you celebrate mine. Hmm. We have to celebrate our history 365 days a year. And when you look at the Black Seas calendar, that's exactly what it does. 365 days a year. When I taught school, on a regular basis every day in class. That's what I drove in every day. If we took Harriet Tubman's birthday to honor her, which fell one year, and I forget the exact date, right? The Friday after Thanksgiving. So what we did is we're going to honor her every year, the Friday after Thanksgiving. It's not always the same date. So you say, well, you, you're not on her birthday. Doesn't matter. I'm honoring her because she said, I could have freed more Negroes if I had could convince them that they were slaves. And I say to you and coining from Harriet Tubman, we could free and build an African nation if we could convince the Negroes of the world that you ain't there yet. You have not arrived. We have 54 nations on the continent of Africa. What Marcus Garvey wanted was a federal government Democratic for African people on the continent unified, lived through Nkrumah, who studied with Thomas W. Harvey here in Philadelphia. Yeah, people don't, don't always get that. He came here and studied under Thomas W. Harvey, took that philosophy back to Africa. And where did Harvey get it from? Marcus Messiah Garvey. Right. See, so our roots run deep and our movement has to run as deep. We have to bring our people together. I'm saying in the memory of my brother, Asim Nkrumah, who never faltered. Uh, single of you recall when we were in New York uh, dealing at the, at the museum, at the Schomburg Museum. We had the event at the Schomburg. Asim, although sick, 
always rode with me. And we came up there. It was one of the few times he had let me get him a chair and get him to sit down. Because he always said he was my security. Always. So I said, but I got this. I'll go park the car. He said, but you got to walk by yourself. I said, that's, I'll be all right, brother. He said, no, no, you get somebody to meet you out there. I said, but you get a chair. And I could get him a chair. And I could give him that respect and that love. And I could support him. And people have questioned some of my actions. But since he was my roadie, I was always going to protect him. But see, that's because he always educated and protected me. We would do the ride to D.C. And neither one of us would eat anything going. And then I realized as life would be a coming challenge, I'd have to pull over and insist that he eat. Yeah. Um, so Marcus Garvey Jr. being essential to us, but find there's a person, Brother Farouk, that is not forgetting. I love Farouk. I remember <laughs> Farouk talking and speaking, not just law, but UNIA and business, and then coming to convention in DC and his ankles were swollen. And I took him to the side and I said, Brother Farouk, your ankle's swollen, why are you here? He said, Brother, you weren't supposed to notice that. I said, what do you mean I wasn't supposed to notice it? I said, you're my brother. I'm supposed to notice everything about you. He said, but ain't nobody else noticed it but you. I said, well, I ain't saying there's nobody but you. He said, well, that's a good thing, brother, because I ain't going nowhere. So you, I'll take care of it later. <laughs> what do you mean take care of it later? OK. But I realized, yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> you know him. That was Brother Farouk. That was him. You know, I knew Redman Battles. But in all of them, at some point, we have to bring all of them into a session where we can relate to them and have them be our inspiration collectively. Because each experience that we've had with each person is different. It's just like so we met Baba Kili, he was quiet. Yes. Baba Ki yes. Go Baba Kili, I, 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 I hate to interrupt, but no, you, you said don't. something about <laughs> little Malcolm. Yeah. Ma 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 listen, listen Ma this is important. Malcolm's grandson. Mm -hmm was a part of the Black Star Action Network International, which was born this weekend in, in York. You know, we were gonna go to York and celebrate, yeah. but, but we decided not to because the sister is now gonna run for the city council uh, up there. But Basani is the Black Star Action Network International that Brother Chief Fode and myself work with. Brother Little Malcolm, a lot of people don't know this, a Little Malcolm, was very much a part of Bassani in the birth of it. So anyway, that happened this weekend also. And Baba Kili just spoke about him teaching little Malcolm. So I'm gonna stop right there. I just wanted to throw that in there because Chief is not here. Chief is not here. And he know, he, you know, we celebrate this weekend the founding of the Black Star Action Network in North America. Anyway, I just, and, I just had to share that. And I just want to kind of, before we close out, since this is also in Tony Martin's time, and thank uh, for the note. This is the day that the Honorable El Haz Malik El Shabazz was assassinated. So before we close, I'd like to have one minute, solid minute of silence. Asante Sana to all of you. Um, I know that minute seemed long, but it really wasn't the same old 60 seconds, <laughs> but, but it captures the moment. What, we, what it means is that sometimes we don't appreciate time until you have to stop and acknowledge it. So I want to wrap up my remarks and I'm saying first so Asante Sana to everyone on this call. Okay, and just, you know, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of your comments. I know that we have done honor 
to the memory of Marcus Messiah Garvey Jr. And some people want to call him Marcus Garvey III. No, he calls himself Jr. And that's why I will always respect him. Marcus Messiah Garvey didn't call himself Jr. So I will always respect that. I know that there will be articles and other things that will change it and will say other things. And they may or may be true or true not. But what's true to me is Marcus Garvey, Marcus Messiah Garvey laid the foundation for the UNIA ACL in 1914. Marcus Garvey Jr. came and worked with and worked through the UNIA ACL actually in the 80s is when he actually began. And he completed 12 years president general, several years as president of the Brooklyn division, which I had opportunity to be a part of. I, sometimes I'll tell you all the story about that. But uh, nonetheless, and that was memories of Tony Martin, El Haas Malik El Shabazz, Asim Nkrumah, Farouk Muhammad, Sister Isaac, Gene Slappy, and others and all those whose names I did not call is not because I don't honor you. And I want to say Sante Sana to all of you that are here with me tonight. We in together. One God. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One aim. One, aim. One, aim. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. Thank I'm you. under love. Thank Peace you. Peace and love. Respect. Peace first. Peace first, everyone. Okay. Is Brother Sam on? No. Nope. I'm on, Baba. Uh, let, let's talk tomorrow morning, the earliest you can. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, we'll, we'll talk offline. Okay, okay. okay. Good. I'll call you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Appreciate all of you.